Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Good evening. This is the North Kansas School Committee meeting, the School Committee's special meeting on today, June 14th, 2023. We are opening our meeting at 7 on the dot. Um, and this meeting is being audio and video recorded, and anyone participating will be audio and video recorded. Um, and um, member, friends, will you please call the roll? Oh, wait. Right. Member Gazy. Okay. I know. It takes, uh, you know, sometimes I lose my cursor. Cool. If Member Robbins can call the roll, would you like her to do that? I think I've got it now. Okay. Um, Mayor Skira. Present. Member Robbins. Present. Member Gazy. Present. Member Serafie Cox. Not yet. Member Stein. Present. Member Levy. Present. Member Miller. Present. Member Goldman. Present. Member Agna. Not present. Member Davis. Present. <clears throat> so Member Agna is absent. Mm -hmm. yes. And we anticipate that Member Sarvikots will be joining us soon. Um, okay, so we have a quorum. Um, the first item on our agenda tonight is to discuss and possibly vote on school committee member complaints about the performance and work of the school committee clerk and secretary to the superintendent. Um, although, so I don't know if you want to join us. Where would you like me to sit? Uh, looks like there's a mic right there. So although the school committee would have held this meeting in executive session under exemption number one, Ms. Thompson requested that this meeting welcome be in open session. That's her right. Nevertheless, even though this is an open meeting, meeting given the sensitive personnel nature of the topics under discussion, I'm announcing some ground rules for the conduct of tonight's meeting. The public is permitted to attend this meeting as long as Ms. Thompson continues to desire to have this meeting uh, in open meeting. Should she at any time desire executive session, we will close. Um, and convene in the posted executive session, and the public will not be allowed in any executive session. The public is permitted to attend this open meeting, however, no individual may address the school committee without the permission of me, the chair, and we will not be taking public comment. Any member of the public may make an audio or video recording of an open session of a public meeting, however, any member of the public who wishes to record this meeting must first notify the chair and must comply with reasonable requirements regarding audio or video equipment so as not to interfere with the meeting. Uh, if you've arrived and you wish to record this meeting, please pass a note to me and let me know that. And we will work to um, acknowledge such attempts at notification and announce that it's being recorded by additional folks. During this meeting, Ms. Thompson will be allowed to answer and provide information to the school committee on any of the issues that the school committee members raise. However, she and others on her behalf are not entitled to cross-examine the school committee or its members. This is a meeting to discuss concerns and make decisions and recommendations about those concerns, not a trial. Um, so we will start this, and I'm going to go through... Um, the nature of the complaints and give some examples and give school committee members an opportunity to add their observations as well. Um, and then Ms. Thompson, you'll have the opportunity to respond. So the first uh, complaint or item is in attention to detail in your role as the recording secretary to the school committee, uh, which has led to errors. Um, this includes repeated posting issues for school committee and subcommittee meetings, such as posting issues and disagreement about the curriculum subcommittee agenda. Um, the uh, November 29, 22 special school committee meeting posting error leading to um, the school improvement plans being rescheduled for the next year. Um, March 15th retreat that was not posted in time and needed to be rescheduled. Also posting or linking materials that should not have been made available to the public such as a hot mic incident where uh, you posted a link to your private conversation about school matters on a public document on the November 12th, 22 curriculum subcommittee agenda. Um, and also posting attorney-client privileged information to the public on a school committee agenda, even though it clearly states attorney work product, this communication is subject to attorney-client privilege. To maintain privilege, do not circulate. Um, so that was uh, added to an agenda and was seen by, um, by the public. Uh, the next area is your role in the backlog of meeting minutes, including executive session, 
Um, this backlog that continues to persist, persist. this uh, includes general inability to meet the deadlines to be compliant with open meeting law for minutes, even with assistance from another central office staff person, not meeting the deadline to comply with the attorney general's determination and um, established uh, by vote the deadline of April, um, the April 13th meeting for completion of the insufficient minutes um, for the May 11th meeting, so the deadline for May 11th. Um, to meet the 60-day deadline that was established by the Attorney General. Then further failing to meet the deadline of June 8th that the school committee voted on at the May 11th meeting, and uh, pushing back and arguing when these issues were identified repeatedly, including arguing that you think that the school committee should prioritize things differently than what has been established for these deadlines, and continued issues with correcting the insufficiencies and mistakes with this set of minutes, despite having specific uh, issues with them pointed out. Moving on to the third area is concerns about not following the rules adopted by the school committee with respect to committee processes and providing inaccurate information to school committee members and others about these processes, including incorrectly representing to the COVID-19 ad hoc committee that the superintendent is always a voting member and chair of ad hoc committees, inaccurately representing to school committee members that votes taken in executive session are not valid until approved in, approved in open session, advising the chair that she should ask someone to withdraw a public records request, and incorrectly advising that someone cannot record a meeting if they announce it. Moving to the fourth area, concerns with your work implementing board docs and not prioritizing its implementation, despite having advocated for it and, having, uh, and the district having paid for its use since um, sometime early in 2022, um, and then uh, advocating this spring that we cancel using it. And then uh, the fifth area is being obstructionist, uncooperative, discourteous, and displaying an insubordinate attitude when working with school committee members in connection with school committee work, especially when members have asked you to adequately fulfill duties required by the school committee. This includes getting very agitated and raising your voice to me and taking the conversation in many irrelevant directions when I've attempted to explain the performance concerns to you and the reasons the school committee has wanted to meet with you, um, and spending uh, inordinate amounts of time writing letters on work time or writing emails and explaining why meeting deadlines set by the school committee cannot be accomplished instead of focusing on doing that work. So those are those, the uh, five areas and some examples. Now I'll turn to the school committee and see if anyone would like to um, have anything to add on any of those areas. I hate to be off topic. Mm -hmm. I just um, I was preparing for note taking and just wanted to make sure that I was in the right document. I'm preparing, I, I'm in the document that I have shared. I'm going to send it to you right now. Okay. So Meg has started in the document. Thank you, Meg. Document. I really appreciate it. I've got this thing that I'm Very good. Going Apologies to everyone for my belated arrival. I literally just came back from Boston for a work meeting. Okay. Sorry for the logistics. That's okay. They're all on the same page. <laughs> <So>. <clears throat> While we're waiting, I'd be happy to add a little. And, and I think for me, <coughs> Annie, I, um, I think it's really important for you to be able to hear feedback so that, um, so that improvements can be made. I think it's hard that we as a school committee haven't, um, haven't had an opportunity to really voice the impact of some of the things that you've done and therefore you haven't had an opportunity to do things differently because you may not have known that they were landing and impacting us. And so um, one of the things that I want to just name is not, not just that these things occurred, but that they had a real negative impact on our ability to do our work. And I, and I know that that's not something you do maliciously. And I want to name that, that um, we want to, I, I'll speak for myself, I want to give you the opportunity to be able to hear the impact so that things can be done differently. And so an example that the mayor mentioned of um, misposting um, or not posting the retreats that were really what we were going to be using to, to um, plan out the superintendent's search um, that was something that also happened with the superintendent interim search, interim superintendent search where things didn't get posted on time and then the meetings that we needed in order to plan the process 
just couldn't happen. And so we weren't able to adequately plan um, for the superintendent search. I think I spent hours uh, after our retreat really rushing to get everything together for the search because we hadn't had that extra meeting to be able to do that work together as a committee. So I think just, just for me, I want to name that impact of how hard it is to do the work of the school committee because of some of those mistakes that were made. Right. I totally understand. And I, I, when a mistake like that is made, I feel the impact on everybody. And I apologize. And I did apologize. I am only human. You know, I've done, since I started this job in August of 2018, I've done 400, a little over 420 meetings. I have missed the posting on six of them. And I would say three, including that one, were totally my fault. And then three others were miscommunications. Yeah. To over COVID. And every single one of them hits me right here because I do not want to impact the hard work that the committee does. Um, I think what I, what I have said many times, long before anybody here was on the committee, um, you know, we've got a backlog. We had a backlog when I got here in 2018. And no matter how much I've, am I being heard? Oh, oh. yeah, but it didn't turn green. Hello, testing, testing. Can you hear me, Janelle? Batteries. Batteries. They were charged. Yeah, they were charged. Oh, we might. It might not be on. Been there. I feel like I've been here before. I feel like I've been here before, too. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Is it supposed to glow green? It's supposed to glow green mm -hmm. right here. So this mic is on and it should be picking up. I feel like everybody can hear me, right? So Yeah, except that's not attached to the Zoom. We had a lot of problems with these mics during the superintendent search, if you remember. I can hear you. Andy, could you just back up one minute? Because I didn't get the last sentence that you had. So you said um, I, I lost it after COVID because of COVID, and then you were at um, oh, before this school year. I, like I said, uh, you know, over 420 meetings, I've missed six postings. I remember every single one of them. It really gets to me when that happens. But honestly, six postings, I don't think, are a pattern. <laughs> um, and, you know, when, not that I have defense, but I will say this about the first quarter of this year. There were 14 meetings in January. There were 14 meetings in January, 12 in February, and 10 in uh, March. That's double the meetings that we should be having for one clerk to keep up with. Basically, if you go back to all the meetings uh, in the past four years, we've quadrupled the work of the central office and the clerk. And there's still really only one clerk. So I just ask that you hold a little bit of grace for the amount of work that has been loaded on here. And I have caught up with some backlogs as we went along all by myself. It wasn't until we got this new secretary that I had somebody that could help me. Uh, a couple of times, well, we, we hired Greg Kerstetter for a while to help with some of that stuff. I just had to rewrite a lot of those minutes. Um, and I'm very grateful to Bobby and the mayor uh, whoever it was that helped make the decision to hire a temp person that I will be training on Friday to help them catch up over the summer. So hopefully, and because this person is willing to work on Zoom with me, we'll be able to share documents, and I, I'll really be able to train that person uh, in the correct way to do minutes. But I'm very sorry that um, that retreat didn't get scheduled, uh, and you know I apologized profusely yeah. at the time, and I, I do understand. I appreciate that, and I think I think for me. I, I this this conversation isn't about um, exactly how many errors were made. We know that mistakes happen. Uh, I think for me, it it has felt like a pattern because it has been more than six issues with posting. And what I want to for us to be able to do is support you rather than like I know you're apologetic. And now for us to move forward to figure out how do we support you to be able to have the, um, the structure that you need so that those mistakes don't continue to, to get made. 
And I don't know that that's something that you need to respond to right now unless you have thoughts, but I do hear you that it's, it's feeling like, like the work of, of the clerk is more than you feel like you can do as one individual. Well, I think that we've quadrupled the work of the school committee. And I think that, yeah, we need two clerks, not one. Uh, but I also see that this particular committee, and I'm very grateful to this committee for adhering to, finally, adhering to a um, set schedule for meetings and keeping it between, you know, uh, you know that five meeting mark, five meeting a month, uh, that would be very, very helpful going forward. It, you know, when I did this work between 2010 and 2013, uh, when I left, I left to go do something else. Uh, we were doing five meetings a month. It, you know, once in a while it was six meetings a month, and that was really tough to keep up with. Uh, I was the only clerk that stayed for three years. We had lost four clerks in the three years before that. Um, it's a tough job. You stay up late at night. It's hard to keep things going. It's a very political. It's a very large board compared to other boards. Um, so it's a lot of work, and I know that when I left in 2013, I stayed for three weeks to train the person, and there was no backlog when I left, none at all. I made sure everything, I worked with Mayor Narkwoods to make sure that everything was done, and you know, that's the way it was. When I came back in 2018, there was a two-year backlog, and I think that the school committee that was in place at that time is the school committee that started a lot more meetings, a lot more committees, uh, and longer meetings, too. And I think it was very frustrating for the clerk. So uh, honestly, it, it, whether it was me or anybody else, I think any clerk would have frustrations with that. And I do apologize. I mean, I want to apologize to the mayor and to Attorney Taylor for a email, my last email that I sent out. I was very frustrated. I wasn't thinking straight. It's very hard to write 30-something sets of minutes in a matter of, uh, you know, 10 days, which I did, and, um, you know, then to be told you got to redo it. And, you know, I was going on former brain from former school committee who had asked me to not put so much detail in the minutes in order so that we could keep... I've been complaining about this backlog and asking for changes for a long time. And so the former school committee was very helpful in asking me to just put the video in. And now I had to go back and, uh, you know, summarize everything all over again. So. It is helpful to keep the meetings uh, fewer. Member <laughs> you know, I think one of the things that's challenging for me um, is that there are a lot of meetings, um, but the school committee's work can't be dictated by the pace that the current staff is keep up with. So if it is the case that we need to add additional resources, we need to know that rather than not do the work. So it's frustrating for me to hear, you need to stick to my schedule because I see it as what's manageable. And my understanding is that there was a backlog when you came back, but there was a temp hired, that backlog was erased. There was another backlog, there was a plan put in place in 2021 that was supposed to be completed by June 22, and that didn't happen. Like, I think the story is more complicated of the backlog. And um, it, it, I'm just not sure if it, what the volume is is unreasonable for a, a full-time clerk to handle. And I think about the volume of means that the city council has versus us. They have one clerk. They are not running afoul, to my knowledge, of open meeting law, the minutes production, and they have arguably more meetings than we do. So I just, I'm just i just not um, feeling confident in the explanation um, that if we only stick to five meetings a month, all these things are going to be fixed. So that's my concern, just given the history and what has been shared about the backlog issue. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess I'm wondering how confident you are in your ability to keep up with the minutes and overcome the backlog by the dates that we need to to meet the state's requirements. Uh, very confident. Um, I'm very confident in that at this point because we've worked really hard to put together a plan. But before I say that, I want to say that Laura Kruxler, who's our city council clerk, that's all she does as a city council. I do the work of 
Annie Lesko, like, you know, and I do the work of a couple of people in the mayor's office and the clerking. So, um, you know, the, the, I don't have to explain it because you just have to go back in the historical record. The work of the school committee has quadrupled in the last 10 years. It just has. There's a number of meetings, just have. And so, you know, I didn't have a good partner for a long time. Now I've got Michelle, and we're really working on our processes. Um, you know, back when I recommended board docs, I was desperate. I was asking the committee to help me with this. Uh, and uh, I thought the board docs would help because not everybody was using Google Docs the way we use it now, and I thought it would be helpful, especially for the policies. It didn't end up being that way. If we stay, and I'm really, I'm pinpointing that five, I want to say six, I've been doing this a long time, I can handle six meetings a month, but I don't even dare say six because I'm afraid that it's going to be really, really long meetings, and you know, if, if, even though I'm, I'm very confident, if we had, were totally caught up and we had five or six meetings a month, I could handle that perfectly confident. I've been doing it a long time. It takes a long time to learn to write minutes, especially for really long meetings that are hours and hours long. And it takes a long time to train people to do it. I'm confident that with five or six meetings a month, I could do also with the um, you know subcommittee minutes. I'm very confident about all of that and all of the other things that need to get done after a meeting and before a meeting. Um, you know, I don't know what to say. I mean, you know, 14 minutes a month, or 14 meetings a month, or even 10 meetings a month, or 20 meetings a month sometimes this has happened. That's a lot of meetings. They, you know, it's, it's not possible to get it all done. There's no way to find a superhuman to do that. Um, but if six meetings a month, yes, I could do that. There we um, And I hear you. And I, my question really will resonate back to what Member Stein said, which is, this is the job. So the job is the meetings that the school committee has to have to do the work that we need to do. And I, I think that what I'm hearing from you is that you feel you can't do that. And I don't think we're in a position to change that position or to augment it. Um, you've recently received a very substantial increase in pay to a professional level. And um, I, would, I thought that the assumption in that was that it meant doing the job that's before us now. So I know you can understand the bind that we're in, which is we have the open meeting law, um, not just complaints, but I think it's $1,000 um, per overage on meetings, minutes that we have not submitted that is in the state's hands now. Um, so I, I have no picture of how that would be caught up and we would continue to do the work that we need to do, which we need to do as a committee and we need to have a clerk who can support the work and not really define the parameters of what that work is. We, we need that supportive attitude towards it and the confidence that the clerk feels this is a job that he or she would like to do. And I'm not hearing that. Well, yes, this is a job that I would like to do, and I do have the confidence that I can do it, but I, I am very much going to stay. I also need the cooperation of the committee. We have to work together. Uh, I really, really mean that, and you have to do what you think is right. I'm just going to present the absolute truth the way I see it. Uh, we've been working very hard. We have a plan to catch up on the minutes in this very, very quick deadline. I was not confident about that plan a month ago because of all these revisions and rewrites. Uh, but now we've got that done. I've put a lot of hours into that, and um, we have a temp. We found a temp that's willing to do it and willing to work with me. So we worked out that I will train her to do the backlog of student advisory committee meetings, which are very easy minutes to do. And once she's ready with that, then we can move on to other ones. I'm the one that's going to have to do the backlog of executive session and negotiating minutes uh, because those are executive session, and I was the only one I was there, and I wrote the notes. Um, so I'm very confident over the summer uh, that I will be able to do that. My, I have sort of, you know, post-traumatic stress about, you know, when this committee decided to hire MASC for the superintendent search, great, that was great, but no one told us and no one warned us that we would be doing the amount of work for that search. Uh, and so we did have to push back on MASC a little bit during that search and say, you know, no, it's not up to us to write the flyers and to do all the stuff. This is really kind of in your wheelhouse. Or please help us. It was an overwhelming amount of meetings, and you get exhausted staying up that late, and you know that that can lead to mistakes. It just can. I'm only human. So yes, I, I very much want to do the work. I very much you know want to work with you, good people, and anybody else that comes after you, and help out the district. Um, you know, I'm I'm 
passionate about the democratic process. And, you know, sometimes if I've given a little pushback on an agenda of a subcommittee and said, this isn't within open meeting law, we really have to make this very clear to the public, I'm sorry if you took offense at that. I don't mean to give offense. I'm just trying to do my job. Um, sorry, yes. I don't, I don't know how we're raising hands. <laughs> um, so Annie, I, um, I hear a lot of, you know, I hear a lot of different points of view here. I can imagine this situation from your, from your viewpoint. Um, and I can also understand your frustration. Not only did you know, were things difficult during COVID and that sort of thing. You also had a supervisor that did not actually put you on a performance improvement plan or put things into your record that illustrate either strengths or weaknesses. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, I can tell you that I personally expressed to him several times extreme frustration with oversights that you had made, clerical errors that you had made that had impeded my ability as the negotiating chair to complete negotiations with our union. And it is exceedingly frustrating to me that those things were not communicated to you, because I didn't feel it was my role as an individual school committee member at that time to speak directly to you. I, it was made exceedingly clear to me when I came on that that I was supposed to only talk to the superintendent. I have a more complicated view of that now, but, um, but in terms of impact, that is the impact, and, and I think it's more than six. Well, you yeah. I mean, there, there are instances where I am protective of subcommittee chairs when they make mistakes. And I always will be that way, just out of politeness. Um, I, I'm sorry, I, I guess I'm, I'm confused. So what I was just saying was oversights that you made where I then was not able to engage in the sort of negotiations that I needed to engage in. Okay. Um, and, and that was not just about posting meetings too late or that sort of thing, which I know happened with the negotiating subcommittee meetings. Yes, that's one of the six. More than one. Where, which ones? Well, so that is one of the things that I realized as we were preparing for this meeting was that I hadn't been keeping a log of that. Okay. Well, and there, there, was, and there, was, there was in June one for negotiating. Okay, so let's, uh, there's not a crosstalk here. So there was therapy classes I recognized. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and so that's why I'm expressing frustration that uh, the previous superintendent did not communicate these things or record these things because I communicated them to him. And, um, and as your day-to-day -day supervisor, I saw that as his role. So it's true, I didn't, I didn't keep that log, but it wasn't, I didn't think I had to, right? Um, I, <clears throat> I feel like I was in the middle of a thought before when, when, but I, I lost it. I apologize. That was the main thing okay. about, about nego uh, negotiations. Yeah. Okay. Can I respond to that? Um, let me, for. The, my intention had actually had been for the school committee to all speak before response, but um, we, that we haven't been doing that. But I just want to check in if there are school committee members that haven't spoken yet who'd like to. Okay, seeing none go, please. Uh, I guess I, I'll say this. I've worked with three superintendents. Um, my first superintendent, um, Brian Salzer, he was amazing. He, um, checked over every one of my minutes. I had somebody there to have my back and you know, made sure I could bring in uh, agendas and say, tell me what you think, tell me what you think. Um, and that was great. That was very, very helpful. If there was a problem, if the school committee member complained about anything, which didn't happen during that time, but if he had a problem, 
he'd come to me and talk to me about it. Dr. Provost was so overwhelmed. Uh, I often went to him with problems and, you know, stamped my feet and said, how can we do this many meetings? How are we going to do this? We need to hire somebody. What are we going to do? And he was just like, I'm overwhelmed. I, you, know, I, you know, I understand where you're coming from. The other thing I want to say is I'm an assistant to the superintendent in other ways, not just the school committee. So I have a background in copywriting. I'm a very fast writer. I'm a very literary person. Um, I can dash off an email real quick. I'm not wasting my time when I do it. Uh, and I am an editor. I was an editor for Dr. Provost for almost everything he sent out. And that, that took a lot of time. He needed me for that. Uh, I think Dr. Pearson Campbell also has used my services in that way. Uh, I was frustrated over the, um, you know, when, when, we, when Dr. Provost left, Dr. Pearson Campbell came on, it was kind of it was a difficult time for me. Um, remember, Lady, last June was a tough time for me. I was supposed to take medical leave, and I did. I put it off for three weeks, and I, should, I was in great pain when we went through that interim superintendent search, so I'm sorry that I made those mistakes then. I came back from medical leave a lot sooner than I should have. Uh, you know, the what you call a hot mic moment, I was complaining about the physical pain I was in with a friend. Uh, so I was suffering through that a lot. And I hope that you guys have some compassion for that. That was a tough time. I came back to a new superintendent that was, you know, struggling to get her feet, and I felt very compelled to help her and help the whole district. Everybody calling and everybody upset. It was a very upsetting time for the district, and it was a rough time to go through a serious operation. So, I mean, that was a real thing. So, for, as far as Dr. Provost went, I, I was frustrated that he missed communication from your end and from my end, but, you know, I saw everything he had to do and all the meetings he had to attend to, and it, it was an overwhelming amount of meetings. It was much more than it had ever been before. So I think that he and I would have done a lot better if we had had, I'm just going to keep saying it, you know, you have to do what you think is best. If you don't think the number of meetings were the cause of any of this, then I'm just going to have to leave it there for you and you'll have to figure out what you think is the reason. But, um, you know, to me that, that makes a lot of sense and I, I do really think that I'm perfectly willing to work with any superintendent and the mayor if there's complaints and work it out with the mayor and the superintendent. And I think there's a couple of really important reasons that that should be the way of doing it. One is that the mayor has been elected by everybody in this city. And what she decides and what the superintendent decides for the district, that should be what everybody goes by. Everybody on the staff, everybody on the school committee. Unfortunately, it's been a very politicized situation. And we just, you know, I mean, this, this, the superintendent has lost authority. And I hate to see the mayor losing authority in this way. So, um, you know, I'd like to work things, anything out with the central office or me, with the mayor and the superintendent, and, and have everybody on the school committee accept that. I think that would be the best way for everybody. The other thing is, it's a bad practice, in my opinion, for the entire committee to evaluate staff. It's always been a situation for the clerk that the clerk feels safe, that they aren't going to be pulled up in front of something like this. Uh, who would take this job? Thing, that they would have to go through this with the really tough things that this job entails. Uh, I'm under a confidentiality agreement. I take that very, very seriously. Uh, I am a member of the staff, but I am not in the union. So I take that very seriously. I'm basically Switzerland. I'm neutral, uh, which means that I don't root for the school committee and I don't root for NACE. I stay right in the middle. And some people think that makes me the enemy of everybody, and some very good people understand that I'm a friend of everybody. So it can be a tough spot. Um, as far as negotiating goes, those are a lot of negotiating meetings, Member Sarah Peacocks. We're 23 in April of 2020. 23 meetings. That is not the top meeting. That's, that's a crazy amount of meetings. I mean, I don't know how you couldn't say that's a crazy amount of meetings. I still am not rested up from that. So, and I know, you were there, and if I made mistakes, I, I'm very sorry. If Dr. Provost didn't tell me about them, I think that, um, I, I, I don't, it's not that he didn't tell me about them, I think that we met every day, and we both were under an incredible amount of stress to get 100,000 things done. Uh, with no net, it was a tough time. It was truly an unbelievable time, and just having gone through some of the meeting minutes of that, I can't even believe we made it through. And I didn't expect, when the shutdown happened, that there would be so much negotiating after having negotiated the contract. 
Um, so that was a lot. I mean, we negotiated basically for four years straight. And it's usually you negotiate, we'll go into negotiating next year again, right? So you negotiate, it should be about a six month process, and then you get two and a half, three years off from negotiating. But there was no, no time off from negotiating during that time. It was just a constant four years of negotiating. I hope that you can understand that and factor that in too, having one clerk in the office. And in fact, then there was nobody to help me, but there was Greg Kerstetter for a little while, but after a while he said, I can't do this, I can't do this anymore. So I begged him to come back and help me, but he's not interested. You know, but he was very helpful, and I'm really hopeful for the person that's coming in on Friday, that we can hire temporarily over the summer to get some things done. And she looks like she's got the kind of background that she can work with. Okay, before I go, um, I'll, I'll go to Member Sutton and Member Sarkey Cox, unless there's someone who hasn't spoken yet. But I just want to redirect us a little bit and remind everyone that we're not here to discuss complaints about other individuals. Mm -hmm. We're really just here to, to talk about um, the school committee's concerns with Ms. Thompson. Um, so, Member Stein. Can, can I just stop us for one second? All right, do you have a Google Doc? Can you just create a drive doc? And... I did. I okay. shared it with. Okay. I, so, but are you ready to go on that then? Can you just email me what you what have, have there and I'll yep. do it with yep. that? Do you want me to share the doc you shared with me with? No, I because <laughs> she has written so much in that document that. Uh, um, do, do you want me to wait until you have it, or? <laughs> <laughs> Emily um, notes three, wing in their way. No, go ahead. Emily she notes three is, yeah. has been emailed. Goodness, okay. I had hoped to be back from Boston in time to take care of these logistical We may have to get some weather. We did hit some weather, and the Wi-Fi in here is not impressive. It's slow. Yeah. <laughs> the, air in, the air in here is not impressive either. <laughs> there is a, Mayor, there is a, it's, I know from experience it's pretty loud. Oh, right, so, it is loud. Yeah, you um, read better, it just keeps letting. And it's and very loud. Oh, yeah. Okay. I feel great. <laughs> I will do it once it comes through. Yeah, and you can just you can plug it in. Maybe. Maybe. Just keep going. And yeah, yeah, let's just keep going. <clears throat> Sorry. There was okay. <laughs> I, I think what I'm trying to express um, is, is the following. Um, I don't think anyone's unsympathetic to work demands. Um, and I hear you saying you have a reverence for democracy and open meaning. Uh, law, but that's hard to reconcile with the massive backlog of open meeting violations we have from the minutes not being done. And it's hard to reconcile with the suggestion that this democratically elected committee, two members of which are elected by the whole city, like the mayor, should just do whatever the mayor says. That doesn't seem very democratic to me. Um, but beyond that, like the reason why we're having this conversation um, too is not because you made mistakes, it's that there's a pattern of mistakes over a long period of time and no seeming willingness or ability to overcome them. And that's how we've gotten to this point. So I appreciate that there was poor supervision and confusion about the school committee's role. But you know, we are the appointing authority for a school committee clerk. That doesn't mean we oversee your day-to-day -day activity, but it does mean we do have some control over who's working for us in this position. And unfortunately, this is one of the only ways we have to provide feedback uh, for the reasons that uh, Member Sarvi talks laid out. So I, I, the other point I want to raise is everyone here um, has had to work all those meetings. Everyone behind you has had to work a million hours, be in a million negotiating meetings, 
do their day jobs, etc. And they do it, and because that's part of the job. And so, I go to my normal job, then I go to all these meetings. And the expectation that we have to then give you a special consideration that we're not giving to everyone else here and everyone else in the district doesn't feel good to me. And at no point has either the interim superintendent or the superintendent or you come to the, super, the school committee, either in budget season or at any other time, and said, we're drowning in this workload. Here's what we need to accomplish it. Will you authorize it? Not once. The only thing we have heard is you're having too many meetings. The only solution is for you to do less work. So that, to me, doesn't feel like a collaborative solution. I'm frustrated that your day-to-day -day supervisors haven't said, we think this is an appropriate workload and she's not meeting it, or we think it's inappropriate and here's what we propose to solve it. These are the things we rely on them to do as day-to-day -day supervisors, and they haven't done it. So now we are having to have this conversation. But to my knowledge, um, no one has said this. I, I've suggested this approach to my colleagues a number of times that we task the interim superintendent with figuring this out and asking us for more resources if needed. No one wanted to go along with it. But uh, unfortunately, that's just where we are. Um, so we have the authority to have this conversation. Um, I wish we weren't in this position, but I don't think you're being singled out or treated unfairly um, by the committee in these expectations. I don't think I'm being singled out or treated unfairly either. I'm simply trying to state the fact that many, many meetings a month are too much for one clerk. And I'm also going to point out, Einstein, you are definitely not in all the meetings that I'm in. And on top of all the meetings I do, I do also work a full job during the day. So it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hours. Um, I, it is the superintendent who hires and fires the staff. So it is the superintendent who, who you should speak to about these issues. And we are at a good pass here where we have a new superintendent coming on. And the school committee members can and should make appointments with that superintendent to discuss these things so that they can discuss it with me or any other staff you have an issue with. Um, you know. That's the way I see it. Uh, yes, 10 meetings a month are too much for one clerk to do, on top of everything else that has to be done. You know, if that stays consistent, which it has stayed consistent for all the years that I've been here, you know, not totally. There have been a few months where there was three meetings or whatever, and I was grateful for that. Usually in the summer, there was not a lot of meetings. This would be the first summer that there won't be a lot of meetings. In the summer of 2021, I was very grateful that there was not a lot of meetings in the summer because I had a lot to catch up on, and then I got a public records request from a school committee member that took me eight weeks to finish. It took me away from all of that time to catch up on that. Uh, in the fall, we passed, you know, I was listed as the public records officer, um, so we, we made Michelle the public records officer because we thought maybe this is personal target, all the, all the public records requests we were getting for minutes. Um, and it seems to have worked because there are fewer public records requests. So I don't know if that means I was a personal target or anything, but uh, that has worked. But but that time getting all of those records together and you know, I was lamenting in my heart that instead of having to do that work, I could have actually been doing the work on catching up on the minutes. So it's a snowball effect when there's a lot of meetings. It's more meetings than one clerk can do. And you can disagree with me. You have to do what you think is right. But I'm speaking from my honest heart. I'm not lazy. I know the job. I know the work. I do the work all day long, every day. I put in a, a lot of work. Um, I think it is the number of meetings. But you can disagree with me if you want. Just the point of information. Um, I'm not sure if Layla or the mayor can answer. In her current job description, what percentage of time is dedicated to the school committee clerk role and related materials? And what percentage of time is dedicated to other administrative tasks for the superintendent? The job description isn't divided into percentages. It's not like presented that way. So, I mean, but it'll talk, it talks about duties. Um, and what's the official title? Uh, it's, uh, 
Okay. I, I do have it. It's actually was on the agenda. Yeah. For it's tonight. the assistant to the superintendent and the clerk of the school committee. So it's school committee clerk and secretary to the superintendent is what is on the job description. And in terms of duties, what is it? It's coming your way. In oh, thank you. Sorry. Oh, it's physically coming my way. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and if I may, Mayor, um, I'm also going to point out that if we go through tough times and there's vaccine requirement issues or masking requirement issues, the phone in the central office does not stop ringing. And there's a lot of parents that need to be calmed down, and you don't calm somebody down by telling them to calm down. You calm them down by listening to them, and that often interrupts the work. Um, so keep in mind, you know, decisions that are made by the school committee can also add to the, the um, you know, the, the time constraints and the duties in the central office. I answer the phone for the district. That's a lot of people. Does Michelle answer the phone? Yep, we both answer the phone. I oh, sorry. I just want to say, so when I look at like the essential functions and duties and responsibilities, right, they're, they're the following. So even though there's no percentages here and the title does seem split, here's the list of essential functions, duties, and responsibilities. Serve as the contact person for school committee. Schedule and post all meetings for the school committee and subcommittees. Prepare agendas and meeting packets for school committee and subcommittees. Take and transcribe minutes of school committee and subcommittee meetings. Serve as departmental receptionist. Serve as liaison to town-wide departments. Serve as records access officer for the district, preparing and providing records in compliance with the public records law. Maintain and update school district policies. Process and maintain cumulative records for withdrawn students. Work on special projects as assigned and perform a variety of related work as assigned. The majority of these, as I read them, are school committee clerk responsibilities. Um, it, it is interesting that they would have a split, essentially a split position with no further breakdown. Mm -hmm. But the thrust of this, in my reading, is largely related to school committee clerk work. Um, you know, so I do wonder how much time are these other things taking up? Like, and as I understand it from the website, at least, like you're no longer the records access officer, right? Now that's well, Michelle. I'm no longer listed as that, but I, I do work on records requests. So like what percentage of time is departmental receptionist taking up all these phone calls? And what else is on here? The withdrawn student list and I mean, special projects, it's unclear if those are school committee or not. Perform a wide variety of related work. Is like, how much other stuff are you doing besides what's listed here and for the school committee? Like, if you were to say, like, what percentage of your time you're spending, how much time are you spending as a departmental receptionist? Well, 100% of the time. I mean, I, I used to be more. Michelle and I have worked out a better deal in terms of the phone. So if the phone rings three times, I'll pick it up. But if it rings before that, she'll pick it up because she's she's her job is sort of the district. My job is sort of the school committee. But we both share both. Um, before that, I was answering the phone a lot more for a number of years, so I have a little bit of a break. But I do answer the phone if Michelle's not there for the day, or you know she takes time every day at work to go for at lunch to take a little walk. I you know I'm answering the phones. I mean. There's only two of us in the office. Like, how many calls do you think come in a day? It depends. I mean, when the masking issue was happening, there was calls coming in while you were on the phone all day long, every day, for a couple of weeks. I mean, I'd be interested to see this, like the phone logs, to see the volume, personally. Because um, it would let us know if we have a real need that we're not meeting. Thank you. Member Davis, were you just raising your hand? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Um, of course, as you already know, stop me if I'm um, out of turn, but <clears throat> I'm remembering back to the, the very beginning of the meeting, the guidelines, and, um, and I'm just really attuned to what constitutes, as you, you said, 
not a trial. Um, and the idea of being constructive to be able to move forward is what I'm really trying hard to focus on. Um, because we all know why we're here, that there have been concerns more, more or less from various people. Um, so I would just want to help us focus on, on that. That's, that's what I would want to do because, you know, the water over the dam. But what I, I am hearing, um, Member Stein is, is kind of trying to get a grasp, a feel of, like, what could be done. If, if something feels like it's too much, is there something to be done um, with the phone or the whatever? And so that it doesn't feel like some, if, if Annie can't answer questions that can't be answered, you know, that maybe there isn't an answer. Or has, didn't know that she should be documenting how many calls or whatever. That's, I guess, what I was just trying to say. Yes, Marilyn. Um, my only comment is similar to um, <laughs> um, in that I wanted to go back to the way Dina, uh, I'm sorry, really <laughs> had started this, which is to be constructive. Mm -hmm. I think that the way this is going right now is feeling, it's understandable why Annie would be on the defensive because there's everybody else commenting on negative performance. So I would like to really put our heads together to try to focus on what would change things so that they can improve and what measures can be taken to improve the situation rather than, I mean, I have heard all the concerns and I'm not, I, I, I'm hearing valid points. I just want to focus on what can we do to improve the situation. Okay. Are we going through number by number or is this a? I sort of put it all out there and now you can respond to any of the any of the five numbers, if you'd like to. I, okay. I mean, I, I'm not sure everyone has that in front of them. I'm wondering if it would be helpful to look at the numbers again. Um, it's in the folder, in the Google Drive. Yeah. It's the, um, what's it called? Do you want me to quickly sort of, I won't go through the examples, but so in attention to detail, um, uh, Ms. Thompson's role in the backlog of the meeting minutes, concerns about not following the rules adopted by the school committee with respect to um, school committee processes and providing inaccurate information to school committee members, concerns with um, Ms. Thompson's work implementing board docs and not prioritizing its implementation, um, and uh, being obstructionist or uncooperative or discourteous. So you want it to just be a general conversation and not focus on these numbers? You're, I mean, I wasn't, yeah. I didn't do one and then say, are there any, anything to add on one? And then I, I laid them all out. So any of those five that you'd like to address, please feel free. Um, so I, I have things I would like to address in several of them, but I, I, I feel like I don't want to do that. I, you know, sort of in a block. So. Um, I, I'm actually going to go on to the not following the rules adopted by the school committee, if that's possible. Sure. Um, and that has to do with the inaccurate information piece of it. Um, and Annie, you and I have gone back about this a bit around the curriculum subcommittee. And um, it also happened with the ad hoc COVID committee, which I attended um, all of those meetings. And uh, you spoke with a lot of authority to the group about what you were said this is not the way it should happen, it should happen this way in several instances, which um, I countered when I felt like I did know that there was something different that we should be following. Um, but you were pretty adamant that what you were saying was correct and what I was saying was wrong. We actually had an email exchange about it at some point where I asked you about three items that 
um, we told my committee. Um, and in the long run, it doesn't really come back to making a lot of difference in, the, in what happens in the committee. But in the curriculum committee, it continually took time at the beginning of each meeting to sort of go through this back and forth about what was the legal, um, what were legally appropriate things that we could do in this committee. And that could have varied between um, you absolutely can't do things out of order. Um, it would vary between, you know, if, for example, if we had a thing about connections on it. And you're right to a certain extent, but there's, there's some latitude around that too, but it, all, it's some, it always seemed argumentative to me. And it did keep an hour's meeting, it might take up 10 minutes of an hour's meeting, where we have a number of guests and teachers and administrators who are there giving us their time to talk about the agenda we've created. And um, instead there's this sort of conversation um, that took it away from that. And additionally, the mayor did talk about what happened with the COVID ad hoc committee. And I'm just going to take us back there because I do think that that misinformation had very serious consequences for the outcome of that meeting. And uh, whether it was an oversight on your part is certainly understandable. But as a clerk, um, I think we need to have somebody in that position who either is speaking from that knowledge and that evidence accurately or says, I'm not sure or I don't know, because it does have a knock-on effect that results in some pretty serious um, outcomes that could be different. And, and for me as a school committee member, our work here is about the children who are in front of us. And the work that we all work really hard on is um, to make responsible decisions that impact what happens to them in their educational environment. And um, it feels like it's, it's a little bit never ending just to get to that work with you. Um, so that, that has been a concern of mine that has increased most recently. I felt like all the curriculum committee agendas have been very challenging to get posted. The most recent one you I sent to you well ahead in time. And you said, I'm not going to post it until I have to because the school committee folder takes precedence on that. But my response was, we have a number of people who come to that meeting who I need to inform about the agenda, what their role is on it, and um, that they know the time and it's going to happen. We've missed meetings that haven't been posted properly. Um, people haven't been informed about it. You've told me, I'm not going to tell the people who come to the committee. Um, you tell them. I'm just going to send it to these three people. So I've done all that. And I've, I've basically done the agenda and um, sent it out and waited for it to be posted, contacted the people who are supposed to be there. And um, I don't feel like that's my job as a subcommittee chair. I feel like it's your job. And I feel like I need to be able to say, hey, Annie, help me out in this. Here's the agenda. Can we get it posted? And that I trust that it will happen. And it won't happen after four or five emails saying, can you get it out there? And when it does get posted, and this has happened three times, that the agenda that I sent is the one that gets posted. Um, we had one instance where you decided to take an item out because you're instructed by the superintendent to take the item out. But as the chair of the subcommittee, that legally was not something you responsibly could do. And set our work back considerably. And those are ongoing concerns for me about um, who, who you really feel is running the show there. OK, well, I mean, I guess what I'll say is this last one, I, I really did appreciate you getting me those agenda items to me as early as you did. I mean, I'm grateful for that. I'm sorry it took, you know, I waited until the day that it had to be posted. I had to prioritize. I had a big school committee. It takes a lot to put these big school committee meetings together. There is not a time tonight, and I don't want to waste anybody's time, the number of plates that are spinning and the people that need to be contacted and documents that need to be collected and things that need to be posted correctly is never ending. And if I want to get it right, I mean, here we're talking about a, a public a, a confidential document that apparently I posted to the public, which I'm so sorry, I did not realize I did that. So that's a mistake that I made during one of those things, and I do not want to make those mistakes. So I am, especially in the week of a meeting, going to make the main school committee meeting the priority. I have to. Um, but I do appreciate you getting that stuff to me. Um, I'll, I'll just point out to you that Dr. Provost, when there was an ad hoc committee, he took over. You know, he said, don't worry about it. This is what we're going to do. I would say, oh my god, another committee, we can't do this to us. 
and uh, he would take over and he would be the she would chair it and he would you know I would just take the notes and he would handle everything and there would be whatever the issue was you know it's usually a survey would go out and he would establish the whole thing it's ad hoc which is Latin means for this one thing you know so ad hoc meetings have never been more than two or three meetings ever before recently um, so yeah I've been frustrating with ad hoc meetings and if the superintendent tells me to take something out it's the superintendent who hires and fires and evaluates me the superintendent is who the clerk is going to listen to. I'm sorry. I wish I could listen to everybody. You know, I wish I could make everybody happy at all times, but it's very difficult to do in this situation. So I guess what I'll say going forward is thank you for putting that agenda out better. And I contact the people that are listed on the agenda, but if there's other people you want invited, a lot of people come to the curriculum subcommittee meeting, and I don't know who you want. But if somebody's presenting, they get the agenda, and I, I send them out the agenda. But anybody else, I have to put it in your hands to invite, because I don't know who to invite. And so I, I was under the mistaken belief that it was the, the, the um, superintendent that chaired this, the, any ad hoc meeting, because for four years, it was the superintendent who chaired any ad hoc meeting. But that was before your time, so you wouldn't know that. And that was one of the discussions we had at the exit interview ad hoc committee, which we disagreed about, because you spent a good amount of time telling that committee that ad hoc committees could only meet three times. Which well, no, I said it was the history that it would only meet three times, and I was encouraging you to make sure that your work could be done in those meetings. I think we remember that differently, but thank you. Mm -hmm. um, are you done, number one? I, I feel like I, there's more I have to say about other items, but I'm going to yield the floor to other folks at this point. Okay. Um, Member Miller? Oh, no. All I was going to ask is, I wonder if you have suggestions. Member Robbins had many concerns, and I wondered if you had any suggestions about how that was suggest those concerns could be addressed and changed or how that could be worked out. Uh, I think Member Robbins is much better at putting agendas together than she was. It takes a while to learn how to do that, so if she's good at that. I don't think we'll have issues with that. You know, back in the day, I don't know if anybody wants to hear this, the, the curriculum subcommittee would meet maybe quarterly, you know, and they, there was a lot of work to be done between then and then, you know, but now we're meeting more often. I'm, uh, that's, that's up to you. Um, you know, other <coughs> committees meet more often than they used to do. And so I wonder if you can manage your business in a way that I think it's even more efficient to meet less often for some committees, frankly. So that's a suggestion I have. Um, you know, try to understand that I, I have a boss. The boss is the superintendent. I am dependent on the school committee to pick the boss for me, you know, and I'm grateful for that. So that's really the line of communication there. I, I just wanted to clarify two things. So the superintendent manages your day-to-day -day activity, and the superintendent reports to us. Mm -hmm. And quite clearly in all of the rules, the chair of a subcommittee sets the agenda, not the superintendent. So if there's a conflict and the superintendent tells you to do something, based on that policy, I would say, hey, you need to talk to Meg directly and then you guys let me know what to put on. I do say that, but I can't control if they talk or not. But in this case, you said, no, I just listened to the superintendent and took it off. And let me just get this out. I don't want to go back and forth to avoid what Member Davis pointed out. Um, the other thing is, to Member um, Miller's point, I think what we're looking to hear from you is not, well, it's your decision, but I really think you shouldn't do it that way because it will impact my workload and you should just be able to get this work done in three meetings, which is what I just heard from you. I think what we're looking to hear is, I understand that you're frustrated that I'm not posting those agendas as quickly. And I will do my best to get them up faster. I won't wait to the last minute when you said to me early. I think what we're looking to hear is, I won't argue with you at the beginning of meetings about rules because you're the chair, and if there's a mistake, that's on you. I think what we're looking to hear is that you won't give legal advice anymore during committee meetings uh, or uh, advice on the rules. Um, 
We have a parliamentarian, and we have an attorney here. So, I mean, it, to moving forward, I think that is what Member Robbins is looking for, but I'm not hearing any of that. I'm still hearing, like, this is the way it is. I report to the superintendent, deal with it. And that's really frustrating to me because I don't know how to work with that. I don't think any of us has a problem with anyone making mistakes here. I think we have a problem with the resistance to moving forward productively, which seems like what's happening from my perspective. Well, I guess what I'll say is I, I don't want to be the authority on the meeting law, and I shouldn't be. And I don't want to interfere, and I will try to get things done as quickly as possible. We had a meeting recently where the subcommittee has, subcommittee, school committee has kindly offered to take minutes during subcommittee meetings so that I can get caught up on things and I don't have to sit through the whole meeting of every meeting and listen to things. And that's been happening for about a month, maybe six weeks or five weeks. Uh, and I'm grateful. Uh, but it is a learning curve, and so I have to be involved a little bit. And there was a moment in a subcommittee meeting recently where, I don't know if it was the chair, but it was somebody saying, oh, we don't have to take minutes about this. This is private conversation. And I did have to come in and say, there are no private conversations in public meetings. <coughs> Sometimes I do have to remind people. It takes a while to learn your job as a school committee member, and you really only have two years, you know. So I get it. I think that um, I'll try to do everything and serve you as well as I possibly can. I've told you what helps to get things done better, for, not just for me, but for all of central office. Um, you know, to have central office traumatized with an overworkload, I don't see how that helps the kids of this district, um, and especially I don't see how it helps the teachers. So um, I'm just trying to speak truthfully to you and let you know that I honestly do want to help you as best as I can. Um, but sometimes to help you, I do have to point out some things that I know to be true. If I'm wrong, I apologize, you know, just human, and I will learn from that mistake. But yeah, I mean, I've asked you, Member Stein, to come in and help us with core docs, and you know, you haven't wanted to do that. I invite anybody to come in, and or just call me and voice a concern if you don't want to go to the superintendent or whatever. I'm always here. I'm always doing the job and needing help doing it. Uh, communication, more communication, that's the best thing to do. I mean, regarding board docs, I asked you in December to set up my account. I had board docs, customer service, send you instructions on how to do it. You told me you'd do it. When you got back in January, it never happens. You approached me in March, asked me to help you. I said, okay, I'll help you, but set up my account. And you said, no, 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 you've got to come in. X, Y, and Z, we couldn't make a date work, and then we appointed a liaison, who in my mind should be the one that does it. I've asked board docs to send me how many times you've reached out to them for customer service stuff, because they have the most responsive, easy people to work with. And there's no reason why I physically had to be there. And you didn't meet my condition, which was set up my account first, right? So. I, I'm like at a loss about it. Um, for I, We've spent $18,000 last year on a tool that you wanted that you never set up. We've spent how much money this year or we're going to spend on a tool you still haven't set up. I don't know why your managers haven't made that a priority. I don't know why you haven't made it a priority. I've heard the excuse that I didn't come in for the excuse that you needed to load documentation, which Wordoc says that's not that's not a problem using the software. And I see no evidence that you've made a good faith effort reaching out to them to actually get this thing going. So it's it's extremely frustrating to see that much money wasted for, on a tool that could have helped us avoid some of this backlog. And so that that's really hard for me. I don't know how to square that. Um, and unfortunately, you are the super user, so no one can do anything with this tool in the district unless you do it. So we're just sitting there with dead capital, not doing anything to solve our problem. Um, and it's really frustrating. Uh, and now you don't even want to use it. So we're spending thousands and thousands of dollars on this, and they're like, no, I actually don't want to do it. That's, that doesn't make any sense. Well, and many districts use it. Many districts use it effectively. It has transcription. It has all sorts of great features that we could be taking advantage of to make this minutes issue easier. 
and it hasn't happened. Uh, well, I, I'm, I have to disagree with you on some of that. I'm sorry that you're frustrated. It's been frustrating for me, too. I spent a lot of training time. I had a trainer in Georgia who trained me every week for a while. I presented her with, she truly believed that we could do it one way, but our agendas are very complicated agendas, and she couldn't even make it work. And I got frustrated after spending so much time in the training that I couldn't make it work that I sort of just said, all right, she's not going to help me with this. They, they provide a bunch of videos that you can watch, and so I watched all the videos. It takes a lot of time to do that, by the way. Um, and I was very frustrated with the program. They are not responsive. You can go through my emails if you want. Uh, I asked them many times. I sent them our policy manual because it, it, this is to go back in the history. Our policies, I didn't have the policy manual when I got here. It turned out that the chair of the policy committee had it in her house. I had nothing to work with, and we had uh, website issues where uh, we had two websites at the same time, and on one of them, the old website was the policy manual that I couldn't get into. And then finally, the IT department transferred that policy manual over to the new website, and it was a total mess. Um, and so I'm hoping for the time that's really my personal priority is that policy manual that's what i would like to very very much be working on after these minutes because it needs help and so we had a chair of the subcommittee that um wasn't comfortable using google docs um so i thought maybe this is an answer because the the um, i looked for an answer the guy gave me his pitch i said this is my big issue the policies you know it's really hard to keep it straight what we're doing much better now we're, uh, to keep it straight what the changes are, you know, exactly how to track this, to help the chair, so the chair track it. I was a little alarmed that when I first came back here that the discussion about policies in the regular school committee meeting would go for an hour. Um, you know, I went to the superintendent and I said, what is going on? Why did, you know, is there not a subcommittee? Like, you know, we don't have to rehash everything. But it, it, it was because there was not that organization there and it was my hope that board docs would do that. I sent them the whole policy manual, and it took them over a year to get it back to me. It was very frustrating. I kept getting, a, oh yeah, we're sending it, well, you'll have it next week, you'll have it next week. Well, I didn't get that. So that frustrates me about, um, about the, uh, it, I, I did not find them uh, responsive. As far as your account, you have an account on Board Docs. I set it all up. I am what's called an executive account. There's only two, me and Michelle. We're the only ones. There's a next level. The mayor has an account at the next level because she's able to see everything, and so does the superintendent. But I couldn't get it working to the point. The first thing you have to do is be able to post the agenda in the board docs format. There was no way to get our agenda in there in a way that it would work because I, I developed the voting grid there so that everybody could see it. Now we've done it a couple of times in the meetings, and I was hoping for that in board docs too so that everybody plus the public could see kind of like on C-SPAN, how everybody was voting, right? So that was sort of the goal of it. And then I've been asking for over six months to dump it. It took me until I had Michelle in the office and we could both look at it together to you know, validate that I wasn't going crazy. Michelle and I aren't stupid. We use a lot of software. We've trained on a lot of software. This software is frustrating. I've talked to other districts who use the software and they have a much more simple thing. They have you know, hour long school committee meetings. It's a much more simple process. So I don't think it's right for the, uh, I don't want to spend any more money on it. It was the school committee who got a presentation on it, who did vote it in. It wasn't just me. I brought it to the school committee who made the decision. Uh, and, and that's where we stand. I don't, because, you know, we have chair of the, of the policy subcommittee who's very good at using Google Docs now, and that tracks the, the thing. We have a much better process now, and we'll be able to pull it together better. Um, you know, back then, not everybody was doing Google Docs, so it was an understandable thing, and it was a, it was something that I tried to find a fix for, and the fix didn't work out. It was a vote of the school committee, and it's going to take a vote of the school committee to get rid of it. It's my recommendation, but you have to do what you think is right. Can I, can I say something real quick? So I think one of the things that's frustrating is that this is another example where perhaps you you had a priority for this, which was policies where the school committee had another priority for board docs, which was to get it up and running so that it could help us with minutes and help us with yeah, that was you know, an too. identified issue. Yes. But it, well, it's it's sounding to me like you had really fixated or focused on those policies and really worked on that as opposed to 
working on how to implement it in terms of our meetings and using it for minutes, which perhaps it would have been the case you know, a year ago that you could have identified this actually isn't really going to work for our agendas and our minutes, and we could have saved all of that time and money. But you were prioritizing what, what you want to do as opposed to what I think the school committee um, was looking for from that program when they voted for it. Well, I think what I'll just say, no, my priority was absolutely the kidding them, being the minutes being able to be done in the program. And the program does do that because what happens is you put the vote in right in the agenda. So the vote is calculated digitally in the agenda, and that would have freed me up from a lot of things. I would still, in a remote meeting, have to call the roll, but the roll, it would, I would be putting it directly into the system, and I thought that would be great. I thought that would really help with the minutes. There was a lot of reasons that I, th I wanted a, a software format that would do that. Unfortunately, we can't, the way, that we have a really long agenda, and the, we, it's impossible to stick it into the software program. That It is not programmed for our agenda. And, I understand what you're and saying. And I went to Dr. Provost last year and said, this is frustrating. This trainer is frustrating, you know, hoping that he would communicate. And, um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 he didn't communicate about anything last spring. I mean, he was looking for a job out here. So and that's when I was going through all that. You know, I came back in, in the fall from my operation and began working on it again. And put a lot of work into it diligently, hoping that we could figure out a way to do it. Wondering, am I stupid? You know, and I, I finally got somebody to work. I mean, Michelle and I really worked on that thing. We went back and forth. It took the two of us to sort of puzzle through it. And she wants it gone, too. It's, it's, it, I'm not the only one that doesn't think this is a great program. But I, I couldn't, until certain things can happen, I can't activate anybody else's account. So I, did, I do need, a, if you want to come in and look, I do need a school committee member or somebody to come in, stand there, and we'll go through it together. Um, so that you can see all the little things, you know, that, the hoops that you have to jump through. I've been asking a long time to dump it or to have somebody to come in and look at it. It's up to you how you want to do it. I mean, I definitely wanted it for the minutes, of course, but also for the policies, too. I mean, it seemed like it was going to answer all my questions, and I kind of fell for the sales pitch. And so did the school committee. We've just, I think we've all been asking to have access to it for a while. I, apparently, I'm a super user. Or I, no, I didn't even know that I have an account. You did. I would, you know, it would have been helpful if we could have gotten into it and seen it and, and worked on it. It unfortunately has to be in person for the first time so that we can get through the first sort of, you know, point that it needs to be got through. The only way we can explain it is in person. You know, Michelle understands that we're totally set up to do that and have somebody come in and then puzzle through it with us and then have somebody on the school committee understand where we're coming from. Because you can't screen share? Uh, you could try to screen share. I don't know. I have never done that. Let me think about how we've done it. I mean, we've done it every single way. We've had three computers on it at a time to see if we could communicate in certain ways through the software. Um, you know, I don't know. Why not have somebody come in for an hour and look at it with us? I think I really mean that that would be helpful. Um, it, it's a difficult program. And we've resolved a lot of the issues by you know, sticking to a school committee meeting calendar and by using Google Docs. Okay. Yeah. Member Robbins, you want to So I'm, to, I'm going to go back a little bit and just also remind you in your previous conversation in helping to find solutions to what is a burden for you. Um, I know that in my subcommittee I offered to take minutes for you a year ago and you informed the subcommittee that legally you had to do it. So we didn't do that until our most recent agreement that that would help lighten your load. So I think there has been made an effort to be able to find you some ways to make your job a little less onerous. Um, but you really didn't want that to happen, it felt like. And the legal um, pushback on it was not actually accurate. I'm going to respond to the board docs thing, if that's OK. Um, and that is that I, I was there when it was presented to the school committee originally um, with Mayor Narkowitz. And I was very intrigued by the presentation of it, and I waited for it to come into use for us because I thought this is going to be great. Um, and I, I, um, you know, we had the back and forth about it not being used. Um, and recently, I did a little bit of, of um, because I'm a curious person, uh, finding out a little bit about it myself in May. 
Um, I will also say that I work professionally with school districts or have over the years who um, have adopted using this form of communication. And it seemed to me that I had never run across somebody saying, having the difficulties that you had. So exploring um, how we could be supportive to you. I, I, so I'm familiar with other organizations and districts that use this software successfully. And when I saw it on the agenda for a vote to discontinue it after a substantial expenditure already made, um, I was curious about why it seemed not to be a positive function for our use, especially in the light of our backlog of minutes. So I spoke with board docs. I rang them up um, 4.30 on a Friday. They picked up on the first ring, and they were very pleasant and helpful. Um, they said to me, I do have an account, so they were able to go in and look at there. My, my email was on there. They said they didn't see activity on our site. Um, there was very little active use that, um, and he said very little. There had been very little interaction with the site. They said, he said that Michelle had uploaded our policies and it entered our school committee emails. Um, That's Michelle from Board Docs. And Michelle had uploaded it onto right, Board Docs. Right, not our Michelle. Yeah. And they said Board Docs doesn't upload stuff. They just show you how to. So he instantly offered us all a Zoom training anytime. And although you two are the chief administrators for the program, they can create access on several levels for anyone in the district, from superintendent to all to district to community, which means that any of us can use the software from any location and can access any materials or files we have permissions from you, from the super administrator's board. I'm not sure why there is an assistance that we need to be in the central office to see it on the clerk screens. This gentleman felt very strongly that that was um, not an issue. Um, I asked about it being suitable for our agenda. I listened carefully to what you said, and I really wanted to know about it. And while the platform does have an agenda template, it seems to be similar to ours, and it's used by a lot of districts. And um, it, it is malleable. We could change it, but we could also say, let's use their template. You know, it's something that is used in a lot of different districts. So I was curious about this. I spoke to some clerks that I've worked with. Um, the next day, I spoke with an Eastern Boke Tech clerk. They've had it since 2012. Um, they love it. They say support is available 24-7. They've never had a problem. Board Docs did a two-day training for them, for the school committee and the administra administrators, but it was so easy they had it down in less than one. Um, the software produces agendas and materials as cloud, doc, and email, as well as video and transcription. Those are all things that I would love us to have easily. Um, they also have a process for warrants that have them go from the business office, which I know would help Bobby a lot, and our signer, to the superintendent, to whoever the, off another, the officer is, in this case it would be Gwen, to check for approval and accuracy. Then it goes to each of us via platform for those who use it, and email for those who don't. So each of us reads it, checks approval, we have time with it, and then it goes to the next school committee member and it's done at the end. And they do all their subcommittees on it. Their documents are uploaded under those levels of access that allow permissions to groups and blocks others if not appropriate to their level of need. Minutes are completed immediately, and after each meeting, they're sent out to members. They find it tremendously helpful. Um, they have the Board Docs Plus package. They use it for all their meetings and warrants. They got it through MASC, which bills them every year in a contractual arrangement with Board Docs. So they said, why don't you call MASC? So, they also sent me a bunch of really informative files on how they use it and how to use it, which were very simple and elegant, and I could share those. Um, I spoke with this superintendent's clerk in Wakefield. They've had us since 2013. They only have the basic plan, which is the 9,000. They were unaware of MASC support in that. The superintendent clerk adds in the agenda and documents, and they have a recording clerk who only comes to take notes in the meetings. That person takes verbatim notes aided by the transcription and sends them back to the superintendent clerk who finds it an easy job to summarize and upload for instant minutes that then go into a draft folder for approval immediately. Both these districts were overwhelmingly enthusiastic about the ease of using the software as well as, well as its e efficacy in doing their work. So I was still curious. Um, I used to be a reporter. So I spoke with Glenn Kutcher at MASC, who said there has been some confusion. Apparently, Bobby probably knows more about this. Um, read the payment for board docs. He asked whether we had gone through MASC to get it, but said that in any event, MASC is the liaison for school committee member districts that use it. And yes, there's a cost savings. Apparently, we received it at the MASC level, but they have no record of us having used it when we purchased it. So I called Anne Marie Martin. Um, 
the next day, and they've been dealing with a board dock spilling issue with Northampton for several weeks because um, they received a bill for us for $19,000 and a notice that we want to downgrade our product, which I think came from Bobby, which makes no sense to them because they have no record of us having bought it. Um, they contract with board docs to handle that billing for the lower rate. They get a little bit of a kickback. Somehow we must have contracted outside of them. So Anne Marie was going to call board docs and sort it out, and I think she's probably talked to Bobby since then. But I came away from those conversations thinking that my experience with board docs was very different than your experience with board docs. And um, that what I heard from this gentleman was that, in fact, that our clerks had not actually spent time with the software, which I thought was a concern. Well, I can attest, and so can Michelle, that you spent a lot of time with the software. Maybe it's you, member Robbins, that should come in and help us, since you know so much about the software. But okay. I do believe uh, that mm -hmm. it is going to take a policy change in the agenda for us to get an agenda that works with, with uh, board docs if you want to continue with the program. Uh, and I had my say about it, you know, yes, I've interacted with them a lot, it's been very difficult, I don't know why, it's not the only software that can be difficult, so I don't think it's a big mystery, and I, I do think it's going to take a policy change in the agenda for it to work uh, for us, and it's still going to take a little more work than you think. If nobody wants to come in and take a look at it with us, there's nothing I can do about that, but I really am saying honestly that I think that's the way it should go, we've really gone through this a lot. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to let Bobby talk uh, about the rest of it when the moment comes in the agenda. Um, I wonder if, if there might be a way for us to move this conversation forward by, um, I don't know if, so one of the things that I struggle to understand is the role of the school committee versus the role of the superintendent in setting expectations and in evaluating performance based on those expectations. But um, I wonder if we might, as a school committee, uh, vote to ensure, I don't know if this is allowed, that Annie have an annual evaluation just like every other employee should be having and that the school committee have the opportunity to contribute to the expectations and contribute to the feedback that then gets used in that evaluation. Is that a motion as I'm typing a note? Sure. Can you restate it? Sure. <laughs> I move to, um, I don't know if you can move to ensure. I move to, to <laughs> ask the superintendent Layla, I think you're, I was going to offer a suggestion, but I think you're going there. I think it would be to recommend um, that the incoming superintendent. Thank you. I move to recommend that the incoming superintendent create an evaluation plan for Annie that allows her to be evaluated annually. You don't have to put in like everybody else, but I feel like everybody should be getting evaluations. Um, where the school committee has um, input into suggesting expectations for performance as well as in evaluating that performance. Input in the evaluation. So it's input into both. To create. I'm just uh, doing a motion. Yeah, two people I'm typing it up. Well, mm -hmm. I okay. do the other record. I'm just Ask wondering. the incoming. Okay. Ask the incoming superintendent to conduct. Recommend. That's recommend. the word. Recommend that the incoming superintendent conduct an annual evaluation of Ms. Thompson with input from the school committee on, on expectations ex as well as evaluation of. Performance. 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 And you should probably say the clerk. You shouldn't say somebody's name because yeah. it's the position you should do. Okay. Not to give legal advice. So that was that was a motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion's been made by Member Levy, seconded by Member Sarah P. Cox. Discussion to the motion. Uh, member signing the member Robbins. Um. You go first. 
Sure. <laughs> Put me on the hot seat. Um, I would love that to be the motion that we could make. I would love us to be able to have an annual evaluation. I think that we should have one. I'm really surprised that we haven't. I'm very concerned that um, our current superintendent and our last superintendent have not done that. Um, and I think there have been some instances that certainly have required that um, for the school committee. I'm very concerned about, apparently we're hiring a temporary clerk again to do the backlog of minutes at the same time that we have increased considerably the salary of the present uh, school committee clerk. I don't really understand where the funding for that is going to come from. Um, it's also a solution that I believe has come up at least once, if not twice, in the last four years. It has not proven successful. And um, I, I always believe that you can reinvent yourself and be what you need to do, but I have to say that what I'm not hearing today is a plan by Annie to be able to do the work that we're asking her to do now. Um, I'm hearing the same pushback about the work being un unmanageable, and I can understand that it might be, which to me feels like that's not a job that um, Annie might appropriately be in at this point. Um, and I, my, my pushback on the motion is I, I would counter that by saying that I believe that we need to have somebody in the superintendent, school committee clerk, half time, whatever position, who is actually says I can do the work and comes in and is ready to do it. Um, and that we're pushing off, once again, the same discussion that our predecessors have had on the school committee about um, how we're going to solve a long-term problem with a short-term solution. Can I just conclude? So uh, I will make the point that actually Ms. Thompson made, which is that this is a recommendation for the incoming superintendent for this position, mm -hmm. and it's not specific necessarily to the individual oh. in that position right now. Thank you. And, and, and I, if I can make a suggestion that perhaps Dr. Bonner and I can come up with sort of an evaluation strategy that can be presented to the school committee in a month or three months or whatever you think, um, you know, based on her expectations. Member um, I, I like this motion. Um, I'm kind of horrified that for all these professional positions we don't have routine evaluations, and this has come up in a few other contexts for us in the last few years. So I would almost want to make the motion bigger, which would be not only this position, but we really want to um, request from Dr. Moner that she look at the way evaluations are being handled across the district, if they're actually being completed. Um, you know, sort of an audit. <laughs> like where are we at, at meeting for, for both uh, in-unit members and non-unit members? Like where are we with this? Because it's a, it's a bigger problem than just this situation. So I don't know if you'd take a friendly amendment that we enlarge the scope. And we can name this position, but also, yeah. or split it up, I mean. Yeah. And my, my initial response is that that was a part of the conversation that the superintendent evaluation subcommittee was having. And then we were told we weren't, we shouldn't have any goals for an interim superintendent, which then made it hard for us to have that conversation. And so I guess it's certainly on the radar of that subcommittee to ensure that it's a part of the conversation. I guess I'm just wanting to think about what's the, What's the message we want to send an incoming superintendent before she gets here? Uh, there are a number of goals that we're going to have for her to be thinking about when it comes to um, her initial work with the district. Um, so I th I'm inclined to not accept it as a friendly amendment, even though I totally understand where you're coming from and I absolutely agree with you. It's really just thinking about what are the messages we want to communicate and how to and with her. So I think for me, I'd like to keep the motion to as, as it was um, proposed. But if, uh, if you want to make it a non-friendly amendment and put it up to a vote, we can do that. Yeah. Member Miller? Um, I just want to support what she said. You know, 
because uh, while I agree, um, I think that's not the purpose of our meeting tonight, that we need to keep the motion specific right now to this particular position. And then once the new superintendent comes in, we have an opportunity to discuss the areas in which the new superintendent needs to be alert to and concerned about. That's part of the meeting with the superintendent when she arrives about the district. But for our purposes tonight, I think the motion as it stands is probably appropriate. Member Golan. Thank you. Um, one piece of our work as a school committee is that we are often um, passing motions to make recommendations and whatnot, and they, um, and then like what happens to them. So we're we're making a motion. We're deciding to recommend that the incoming superintendent do this thing, and I'm wondering. That's the sort of, like, wh how, what's the action? How does that information get to the superintendent in a meaningful way so that it is effectively implemented? Mm -hmm. um, we talk about, oh, we have all these goals for her. You know, we, we'll each meet with her individually, but then there's just sort of this cloud of school committee member conversations. So I think that's part of my interest, too, is sort of like, how does this, how, do, how does the action happen? Do we need to refer this recommendation to the superintendent evaluation subcommittee to talk with? Do we send this to the vice chair to like, have a pointed conversation about this? I'm just wondering. I'm happy to relay the information. How it, how it works. And also something to keep in mind about the school committee's work in general, about how we set goals or intentions and then what the action step is and and what is the way that we follow the threads of our issues so that they don't keep falling under the table until they sort of merge back up. So I was just sort of wondering what the how that would happen with this particular motion, which I support. Well, I, I was going to say to that point, making to, to Mayor uh, Shearer's comment, um, Mayor Shara offered that she could relay that information. It certainly could be, if you want to make sure that it's documented, you could certainly offer a friendly, friendly amendment that would say something along the lines of that Mayor Shara will have that conversation with Dr. Brown. Right, so I would like to make a friendly amendment to add a specific mechanism by which this motion is relayed to the superintendent and followed up on. Um, I'm sorry, what is the friendly amendment? To have a specific mechanism? Well, that the mayor that will the mayor. relay okay. Okay. this to Dr. Bonner. Unless you want a different one. I'm not, I'm, I don't, I'm not concerned about who it is particularly. I just want to make sure that it's happening. And to know how Is it's it okay happening. if I write, Mary? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, just to, I, the point you raised is really good and insightful because it is often hard with so many things to follow. And unless someone on the committee is paying attention to a particular issue, a lot of things can get lost just because of volume. Um, you know, and I've been trying to figure out a solution to this too, because in the, in the most recent year, I really had to rely on Attorney Taylor to be like, no, no, the policy we passed is X, so you have to do that. Like, it actually has to happen. So, and that's not a good strategy, right? Like, I don't want to have to go to our attorney no. To enforce the policy that the committee's passed, right? So I am interested in trying to figure out, like you said, like how else could we do this? Um, hopefully some of it will come with the new relationship with the incoming superintendent. But yeah, it's like what mechanisms can we put in place to protect against this type of thing? Uh, 
Because I don't worry about it. And I support this motion. I just wanted to add that all three members of the superintendent school, um, e superintendent evaluation committee are present currently mm -hmm. and may make note of that in addition. Can I call the motion? Call the question. Whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Call the question. Call you want to give members sign the opportunity before you call it? Sorry, I just threw up my hand outside oh, of your view. My I'm peripheral sorry. vision is so The thing I forgot to say was um, this relates to sort of the request I made of Member Levy as the chair of that committee to look into the law, like, because it disheartens me that because someone from MASC said, oh, no, you shouldn't evaluate interims, we just kind of like gave up when we could have and we could have done things differently. Um, so I just want to reinforce like that's why, right? Like for the reason you're you're all raising. Like we need to have real clarity on what we can do and how we can do it so that like member Sarah Cox says, you come in and someone says, No, no, you can't do that. Oh really? I, so I think we need the same sort of clarity around superintendent evaluation. Just to respond, we did know going into our conversations with Superintendent Kristen Campbell that we were advised not to have goals. We decided to make goals. And then as we reported to you, the school committee, it was really unreasonable. It became very clear given her the scope of what she needed to do as an interim superintendent that the goals that we all agreed upon were really not tenable. So um, it's not that it's not simply that MASC said don't do it, and we said, oh, okay, we won't. We did think we might, but then we understood why MASC was recommending that. Okay, so if there's no, you don't have to call the question if there's no further discussion. We can just move to a, does it have to be a roll call? Really? Yeah. Or should it be a roll call? No, I always say, can you just do it as a roll call? Okay, you don't have to, but. Um, okay, who's going to do the roll call? Um, I feel like Rob. member cases really likes, enjoys this. That's <laughs> <laughs> why I like to, yeah, make the closing uh, motion. Is everyone clear <laughs> on what the motion is? I can read it. Recommend this incoming superintendent create an annual evaluation plan for the clerk. That includes input from the school committee on their expectations for performance. And Mayor Shikar will have that conversation with Dr. Bunner. Okay, roll call, please. Uh, Member Robbins? Yes. Um, Member Gazy? Yes. Member Serafi Cox? Yes. Member Stein? Yes. Member Levy? Yes. Member Miller? Yes. Member Goldman? Member Davis? Yes. And Mayor Scher. Yes, Scar. I share. Share. I can't pronounce it. Yes. Okay, great. So that motion passes. Um, is there any further discussion on this agenda item? <coughs> this okay. Uh, let's go with Member Robbins. So is it appropriate to make a motion about the future of our working with this situation, or is this just a dis clarification discussion, this particular situation? I, I think you could make a motion. Okay, well, I'm going to make one. And I, I'm, I'm saddened to make one, but I feel um, enormously frustrated myself, as I'm sure Andy does, about having the support to get the work done at the school committee. And it feels like it's an ongoing challenge um, at every turn in the road. And I'm going to make a motion to recommend to the superintendent um, to dismiss Annie from her role as a school committee report and vote. A mo motion's been made by Member Robbins. Second. Seconded by Member Stein. Discussion. Um, I mean, what I was going to say when I first had my hand up was I, I'm having a hard time figuring out how to move forward 
because I've tried to signal to you ways you might respond to the committee that would make us feel more confident that change is going to happen. And in the exchange right before the previous motion, I felt like there was another missed opportunity where Member Robbins explains to you what she had learned. And rather than saying, you know what, it sounds like maybe I could set up a webinar with these folks for all of you and help facilitate that and we can work on it collectively, it was no one wants to come into the office. And after she's telling you what she's hearing from this individual is that that's unnecessary. And that um, Member Sarah Cox suggested a screen share. I just, there was a good opportunity there to show a different engagement and instead it was just shut it down. And it was like, this is my way or the highway. It's all up to you. You guys decide what you want to do. And it doesn't feel, I, I'm like reaching for like straws to say, how can we move forward? And I just don't see any, which is why I seconded the, the motion. So I'm having a hard time finding evidence and, and sort of the additional information you provided that shows me you're willing to make the changes that the committee is asking for. And that's really unfortunate. That's really hard. Um, because the opportunities have been here. Well, in response to that, if I may, um, I will look into Member Sarah Cox's um, suggestion that we do a screen share. We might be able to do that. We, We'll have to figure that out. I have to sit in front of the program, which I haven't sat in front of the program for a few weeks now, so I'll have to sit in front of it uh, with Michelle. Let's see if we can figure that out, if we can. Hopefully, maybe you and Member Stein will be able to sit with us, or the committee has to find somebody. If, I, don't, I promise it's not going to be that painful. We're looking for solutions here. Um, the other thing I want to say is I'm grateful for the previous vote. Um, it was. I, I will never throw Dr. Provost under the bus because he had a tough job with a lot of work. Um, but it was frustrating. I did ask a lot to have a weekly meeting, and I know Tracy Herity did too, and he never wanted to do that. He was moving very fast. It wasn't his style. Uh, it didn't really happen with Janelle. She's better about it. Um, but, um, you know, I am looking forward to Dr. Bonner being there so that a weekly meeting can be had about my job so that I can feel like I'm heard and that my issues are being um, uh, addressed and the school committee's issues meeting are being addressed in that way and there's better communication going on. Uh, I had another thing I wanted to say and now I've lost it. Um, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't remember what I was going to say, but yeah. Um, I just wanted to clarify the motion. Um, what I have is that the motion is to recommend to the incoming superintendent. It didn't say incoming. Okay. Can you, can you, th that's why I wanted to clarify. Uh, so to it's recommend to the superintendent. interim. The superintendent. So if we voted on this. Um, okay. I, and to the superintendent to dismiss Ms. Thompson from her duties as school committee clerk. Recording clerk, right. Which school is committee clerk. recording clerk. Okay, what's is that the official? I think it's just the school committee school clerk. School committee clerk. Yes, yeah. it's, it's okay. interesting because it's written in different places, different ways. But sure. sure. This, but it's, I understand it's half of But to dismiss from right. her duties as the school, school committee, committee clerk. clerk. Okay. Yes. And I'm going to expand on the, um, my, my rationale for that, which is it's twofold. One is that we need to get this work done. Um, and we've, this has been a years long discussion. Um, Attorney Taylor sent me a document listing the amount of money the district has spent supporting the lack of minutes. And it is not a happy figure of money. If, in fact, um, it's, it makes me feel absolutely terrible because it's money that should be going toward instruction and support for students. Um, and either there was a wrong turn at some point in the past, um, there was whatever it is, but we are in the present. And in the present, we have a, a phenomenal legal obligation to provide minutes. We still don't have a plan about how we're going forward. We don't think we decided as a committee that we are going to hire a temporary clerk, but it sounds like that discussion is already out there, and I don't know how much money is involved in that. I do think we've also paid a lot of overtime, and we've given this existing clerk job. We all voted a substantial increase in pay and rank 
in what, January or February, because we felt it would be an impetus to be able to say, this is a hard job, um, we do believe that you can do it, let's get it done. And it's now extending to the end of July, and we're in a real hot seat in terms of getting the minutes done. But we also don't have any kind of, um, we don't have any kind of really tenacity about how we work with the existing recording clerk's um, burden or load or willingness to do the work in an efficient way. And I, I think it rests with us to say the buck stops. Um, it's a professional position. It should be filled by somebody who really feels confident and competent about doing it. And any, there are lots of things that you're wonderfully skilled for and capable of, but this just may not be the right job for you. Because we need to have the meetings we have. We need to be able to use our time. We try to be efficient. We're not that good at it. But our meetings need to be recorded efficiently. Um, and we'll talk more about that, I think, when we come to talking about the current meetings, minutes that have been submitted. But it feels like swimming um, upstream. So that's my personal rationale. And really, um, I don't disagree with what you're saying. I think we are, I, I too am incredibly frustrated and have incredible misgivings about spending money on attempts and spending money on all the things we spent money on that should be going to, the, to our students and supporting their learning. I also agree with you <clears throat> that there are huge issues with performance. But I also think, I, I agree with Member Seraphie Cox's frustration, or I feel her frustration, that we have been sharing these frustrations with the folks who we thought were supposed to give Annie this feedback. And they weren't giving Annie this feedback. And I do believe that people should have the opportunity to hear feedback to understand what's expected, to have clear expectations set, and to have the opportunity to then meet those expectations knowing that there are gaps in what we are expecting and what we're seeing in performance. And my understanding, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is that there haven't been formal reviews of Annie for her to hear what the expectations are. And so I, I will check my email right now in this very moment to review, to make sure that I didn't miss something. Um, I guess, okay, so my, my feeling would be that I would want to put, to, to ask that Anna be put on a probationary period where we are able to very clearly outline our expectations for performance and give her an opportunity to either meet those expectations or not, and then come back with a with a decision. Can I have a little clarification there? Because I do appreciate what you're saying. I, I just think that um, it, it, you should be requesting that Dr. Bonner put together those expectations. Well, we are also. And, and the reason I'm saying that, with your, your approval in the end, I, I think the reason I'm saying that is because I would be very grateful to have a superintendent that had a rubric or whatever you want to call it of my expectations because if they did, they wouldn't be adding other things to my you know, plate that aren't supposed to be on there and that would be very helpful. Sure. I think your role in supporting the school committee, there are, I, I think, my understanding is that we do have oversight of your role in supporting the school committee. Is that correct? Yeah, so day-to-day -day appointing authority under ed reform is vested in the superintendent. Under chapter, uh, excuse me, section 36 of chapter 71, it's very clear that you appoint a recording secretary. So there's some tension in the statute. There's no case law that sort of un, you know, unpacks that tension, but certainly, it is clear that if, you, if the school committee has concerns about the work that's being done in that, and it, the statute says recording secretary functions, right? If in those functions on behalf of the school committee there are concerns, there's certainly not an issue with you addressing them in this kind of forum. 
and there's certainly not an issue with you making recommendations to the day-to-day -day supervisor who's the superintendent um, to follow up on them in different okay. ways. Thank you. I'm not actually making a motion in this moment because a motion is on the floor. I'm just saying why I understand why the motion is on the floor and why I don't intend to support this motion. Can I ask for some clarification? And that is, um, Mayor, whether you and Attorney Taylor have, in fact, had any opportunity to share with Annie and the superintendent a clear expectations about what she needs to do. So, talking about this minutes backlog, um, I have shared with Annie many. So, you know, when we got the determination from the AG and there was a timeline set up and expectations of what needed to be done to minutes to make them sufficient. Um, I and Attorney Taylor have kind of reiterated those from the AG's determination and then gone back multiple times and said the expectations are that this timeline will be met, this is what needs to be done to make them sufficient. And um, so there have been multiple times that I have, I have uh, reiterated expectations are it, certainly around these items. And, and if I can clarify, my role is to provide legal advice mm -hmm. and guidance. So I, I would not be in the role of providing performance evaluation. Mm -hmm. I'll say, like, this is what, yeah, I reviewed these minutes. These are the insufficiencies I'm still seeing based on open meeting law determinations, right? That would be proper mm -hmm. for my role. But I'm not a manager. I'm not a supervisor. I, I can make recommendations on facts that I see. I want to but the superintendent has been part of those conversations as well. We've talked to yes. the superintendent. Yes. Yes. So would you feel, do you feel that through those conversations, Annie has, in fact, had the opportunity to have those clear expectations set and is knowledgeable about that? I would say yes. I mean, I, I've, I've, pardon me. Um, I put them in writing, and I've uh, we've talked about them verbally. So I've tried to be very clear about them multiple times, so there's no confusion as to what the expectations were around this issue. Thank you. Number um, I mean, just to so that that point as well. Um, the expectations we're talking about here are just the essential functions and responsibilities of the job. That are enumerated in the description. So it's it's not a case that there has been ambiguity about an issue where someone didn't know they were responsible for something. It's like part and parcel of the whole thing. So I guess, you know, I am concerned because of the ambiguity that Attorney Taylor mentioned that if we try to recommend the sort of evaluation process you're talking about, we may give rise to um, challenges that will be ultimately unhelpful to the district. And because it is so clear that we have the ability to appoint this role, it's pretty clear to me that if we say we're dis we want them to dismiss the role, we're acting well on the side of any challenges to protect the district. That's my interpretation of things um, from what uh, Attorney Taylor has <coughs> Has said. Um, I think I want to clarify that. So, under the Ed Reform Law, which is Chapter 71, Chapter 71 says the superintendent is the appointing authority for everybody who's not assigned to a particular school. It says that. There's another section, Section 36, that talks about the school committee shall appoint a recording secretary. There has been no case that resolves that tension. So there's an argument, right, that says, listen, you can remove from the recording functions, but that's where, that's where the space lies. In terms of making recommendations to the superintendent about the work that um, the clerk performs on behalf of the school committee, right? That I think there's clear that that I think is clearly legal. It's a way to reconcile both that tension, right? They'll be coming. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's the opposite. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. 
Um, thank you. Um, no, that's okay. The only, I mean, I think we do have to have, I think everyone on the committee, at the end of the day, has to vote for or against this motion based on whether or not they think things are going to change. And we're not going to be back here in a month, two months, with additional fines, more money spent, and things not taken care of. I, I know we're going to get to this later, but I spent a few hours looking through minutes. There's at least three in my reading that are not accurate. So we're going to have to go through all the, like, I just, I don't have a lot of confidence. So I think if you vote against this motion, you have to be confident that things will change. And I'd ask you to consider how confident you are that things are going to change. Um, I uh, am used to asking you, uh, Attorney Taylor, this question in executive session, so it's strange to ask it in open session, but um, I would like to know from your perspective if um, you would see legal concerns with the motion um, as it's currently stated. The motion that's currently yeah the second the school committee recommends to the superintendent to dismiss Ms. Thompson from her duties as the school committee. It's a recommendation. Okay. It doesn't require. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I mean I think you can you can make recommendations, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I would encourage the school committee members individually as they're considering that vote. Um, you know. What happens um, if, if the recommendation um, isn't adhered to, right? Like, I think that's a, a, a good, each of you, as you vote, might want to consider that. I don't know if there was a second on the motion or not. But there was. Assuming there was. Yeah, the motion was made by Member Stein and seconded by Member And that's a, that's a practical consideration. It's not necessarily a legal one, but it's a practical You said if it isn't adhered to, it's right. not Right, because you're making, a, you'd be making a recommendation by that point, <coughs> right? But, but, you know, ultimately, by making a recommendation, it doesn't mean the person whose mm -hmm. recommendation is made to, they may or may not follow through on it. So as you're thinking about that practical consequence, not so much a legal consequence, I just think you should think about that. My recommendation would be to think about that as well. I'd be happy to speak to that because I have thought about it. And I think what we've heard, and I remember Sarah Cox really um, was quite eloquent about is that, um, and Member Levy, is that there is there's a lack of supervision in the day-to-day activities of our reporting clerk, what we don't have any control over. All we can do is sort of deal with the fallout that comes from it. And we do need to hold the superintendent accountable for that. I'm not sure why that hasn't happened. I mean, I, we've, um, Member Miller has gone in there and devoted her time to trying to figure out how to make the minutes thing work. I know Bobby has stepped up to help with that. Um, everybody seems to be in the mix except for the superintendent. And I, I feel like it's perfectly reasonable at this point um, even though she's leaving us shortly to be able to ask for some feedback on that and some follow-through if that day-to-day -day supervision has not resulted in either clear expectations for Annie about what she's supposed to be doing or that she has made those expectations heard and that they haven't happened. And that's not within our control. That's her day-to-day -day supervision piece. Um, I think it was suggested at a previous meeting that, that in fact we have the superintendent be accountable for seeing that the minutes were produced. And I'm not sure why we didn't go down that route. Um, she is the one who's in that office who is, um, whose responsibility is to, to help support this work going forward. And it doesn't seem unreasonable to say at this point in time, it's OK to step up and, and be accountable for that. Because we're, we're leaving us in a bit of a pickle and a very expensive um, and untimely one. I have heard the superintendent make the expectations known. Um, maybe more recently, not you know, maybe not at when we got the AG's determination, but I have heard her uh, reiterate the, ex the expectations that I have then, you know, that I have delineated. Um, I've heard her 
reiterate them and uh, say directly that those are the expectations that need to be met. And you also said that in a couple of those meetings they were quite unpleasant. Yes. Um, and I think that's another consideration. You know, so um, part of the job is dealing with the public, dealing with us, and dealing with um, the chair and the superintendent in a way that really is, you know, discord, is discussion, is pleasant, is not having people feel frustrated and um, it's not a professional way to conduct yourself. So I have no idea what the superintendent would do with this recommendation. I, probably if I were her, I'd just leave it and walk out the door and go on later. And maybe there needs to be a piece in it that says, if that's not the finding by this superintendent, then it could carry on to the next superintendent. And maybe that's a word, wording that we would add into that. But I also don't, I really don't want to take her off the hook on it. I, I would have really welcomed her participation in um, much of this discussion earlier. So Dr. Kristen Campbell is on Zoom. Would it be? Mm -hmm. it, you can ask her. She has it. I'm also here. Hold on, hold on one second as I try and figure out how to make this louder. Yeah, we're trying to be able to hear you, uh, Dr. Pearson Kim. Okay, go ahead and try to say something. Hello. That's, uh, that's better. That's better. That's the kind of goes. It's, I think that's. I think it's on the monitor. Okay, hold on a second. You don't, you don't do that. I did that one over there. I didn't do it. I, 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 can you just yell yeah. that I did that one? Yeah. Down by your leg. Yeah. Down by your leg. Yep. Volume. The, yep. In the back of it. In, <coughs> in the back of this box. Oh, my own experience. Janelle, could you say uh, some testing words? Uh, Janelle, can you say something again? Over there. Almost. Almost there, we hope. We're moving large objects and trying to increase their volume. Okay. The things you never thought you would do in the air. So enough so I guess yeah. everybody be quiet and Dr. Kristen oh. Campbell please use your teacher voice <laughs> use my voice and I want to be very clear <clears throat> very clear when I received her letter in October I really had to guide her through the rest of the year and how the process begins and also for me being in an interim and I want to be very clear because this is also a legal part I also had to give an attorney for my own self, because I really want to make sure that I have walked with Annie with these notes, and I've also had legal balance for myself. And I do hear the concerns. I did look at emails from Provost in 2020 that there were concerns about the backlog of the emails. I did review the emails from Emily. And you also have to understand that this year was the most difficult year for an interim to come in and settle. And I do hear that you're getting a motion for me to terminate Annie. And I wouldn't want to say anything further because my attorney is not here to represent me because I feel like I have tried to do my best to walk out of this district with my head held high. I try to do my best to navigate a school district, a school committee, a school system, and at the same time, Bobby and I sometimes have to sit together with Annie and walk through these documents for the past few months. And it has been difficult. It has been. So I did document when I first came in. I documented this last meeting. But I really have to be very mindful of what I say because my own attorney is not here. And I have less than 10 days or 20 days to come out of here. And I'm going to hold my head up high and I'm trying to navigate this. So I hope that you understand that you understand that I did not supervise until you come into that office day in and day out to see how fast moving that office is and the amount of meetings 
and I do hear your concerns. And we have been working with Annie, but I will not, until I have legal um, representation for me to say anything else. So please understand that. Thank you, Dr. Pearson Campbell. Oh, sorry. Thank Remember? you, Dr. Pearson Campbell. I don't know if you heard the mayor say that. Uh, this mic is not really close to you. So can I amend the motion? There is a hand over there. Sorry. Member Golney. Thank, Thank you. See you. Sorry. I just want to, um, uh, regarding this motion, say that I heard Member Stein saying that a, mo a vote yes for this motion means this, and a vote against this motion means th that, and I disagree a lot. I think that a, a vote for this motion means what this motion says, and but a vote against it doesn't mean anything other than I am not support wholeheartedly supporting this motion. There are alternative interpretations of what a no vote would mean, and there is opportunity for more discussion after this, and more or motions. not, or and more motions, or or not. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Did I did I see another hand? I was just going to amend the motion. Oh yes, and I and um, I hear what Dr. Pearson Campbell is saying, and I wonder if there's a way to have this motion um, encourage Dr. Pearson Campbell to. Um, it's dismissing Annie from her role as the school committee clerk, but I believe there's another portion of her job that still is under the superintendent's control there. Um, and I'm just going to explain that it would seem that if that happened, that monies, it would become not a full-time job, and those monies could be allocated towards the um, temp, which would mean we're not expending elsewhere if Annie chose to stay in uh, the part-time piece. Does that make sense? Because it, it seems like half the job is under the superintendent's, is working for the superintendent, and half the job is working for the school committee, is how it's been explained to me. But that sounds, that sounds more like that motion. Okay, no, I know that. I'm yeah. just trying to get okay. some clarity about what that is. So there would, would be some wiggle room there, so that if the superintendent wanted to keep her on in that capacity for fewer hours and allow the temp to pick up the additional minutes that are coming through and um, however they wanted to work it out with Michelle for the postings, the direct school committee work that would take away from that. Um, that's just a clarification for me. That's not part of the motion, but this, this motion would extend to superintendents. <laughs> so making it plural somehow. So it would, it would should, should Superintendent Pearson Campbell decide that legally she was not comfortable with taking that action, it would be something that would then come into Dr. Bonner's court to know that that was a recommendation from the school committee. I find it really challenging that we don't, that there are percentages assigned to this I know. position. I know. And it's, it's kind of unusual because there are yeah. other positions where yeah. they're sort of split between different places. And so um, that's something that I would love to have us uh, get clarified um, or, or have that be determined so that. Um, we can more, we can just understand better what percent work is for the school committee and what Do is for the superintendent. No, I, yeah. that, no, I mean, I, it's I'm such, not there I mean, day day. At some point, the job description would have to be rewritten, too. Yeah. Um, so does that make sense to add the plural to it? May, may yeah. I? Yes. And this, is, this is just listening to everybody. Um, you know, it's in terms of the discussion that's taken place. Some of this seems to me like it's this. There's there's this missing element, which is, what is the work that needs to get done for the school committee, right? And what are the resources that? Um, I mean, I hear some members of the school committee saying they are concerned. There seems they're concerned about a level of trust that the work that they need to get done is going to get done, right? And I've heard that. But it also seems like there is a real unknown, which is, is what are, how, if, if Annie did not perform this, if Ms. Thompson did not perform this role, I'm sorry, <coughs> um, you know, what would, 
the available resources allow this to be reconstructed like, right? And so maybe it's, you know, maybe in here there's the potential to have the incoming superintendent um, and, and certainly um, the interim superintendent has a year's worth of sort of knowing how that office mm -hmm. operates, sort of um, report on the resources and what, a, what might be needed in that office um, to make sure um, that the work is getting done. And maybe it would be suggestions about changing roles or um, hiring new people. But, you know, that's what hopefully what you have managers for, right? To make those kinds of recommendations. <laughs> so just a suggestion, right. all the pieces I'm hearing, um, take it for what it's worth. Um, you've got latitude here. I, I like that suggestion a lot. I'm wondering what the um, parameters would be around that reported back to the school committee in terms of those decisions being made. And I, you try to put yourself in the shoes of someone coming newly into the district and somebody who's leaving the district. And they're both very difficult positions to be in. But, but we're here right now. And we have this dilemma in the work that we need to do. So it feels like whatever decision that we make coming out of tonight, any responsible decision we need to make needs to have some sort of definitive timeline to it and a definitive um, start and end to it and um, some sort of much quicker evaluation other than an annual one about um, whether or not that work is happening. So um, if there's somebody else who would like to put what um, Layla had suggested oh, in as part of my motion, that would be fine. Yeah. Can I go to member of real quick? Yeah. Okay. What, what do you have to say? Well, I just want to raise the problem that we just talked about, which is we can make a recommendation, but it doesn't mean it's going to play out. So we're burning energy on fixing these pieces, and we don't have any control, actually, of how that goes. We don't know what you know, knowledge or perspective someone would bring who has the action to do that will bring. So like, again, like we're sort of in that same, you know, we're just magnifying the complexity of it if we try to piecemeal a solution sort of outside of that, con you know, of that context. That's my concern. I, I'll just, in conversations I've had with Dr. Bonner, she has said that she's very interested and believes in setting expectations and mm -hmm. being very clear about what they are, if that's helpful. Okay. So my proposal would be that our recommendation to the incoming superintendent is that over the first three months of her time in the district, she worked um, with us, the school committee, to review the job description, set clear expectations for the role, and evaluate whether the role, whether the job <clears throat> is adequately described slash supported, as well as whether Annie is able to perform the duties of the role given the expectations laid out for her. Hold I, on, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Why don't you read what you've got so far? Well, that wasn't a motion. But I think it's gonna be, so that's why I'm writing. Oh, that yeah. was my motion. You didn't well, say that. That, <laughs> that was. Sorry. That's her motion. She was suggesting. She asked for a recommendation yeah. to the motion. Okay, so, so motion. you're offering a friendly amendment. Yes. Okay. So you want to say it back, and then I can. School say committee it. recommends to the incoming superintendent to review the job description of the clerk within the first three months. And within the first three months. And within the first three mo months. Of her time in the district to review the job description. Uh, sorry, to review with the school committee the job description, set expectations for the role, and evaluate whether the role is adequately described slash supported, as well as if Ms. Thompson has 
adequately performed the role? Yeah, that was it. Have you a point of information on Layla on this? Which is, how much time do we have before the state wants it to Because we're talking July, August, September. <laughs> I mean, the state would have wanted it done years ago, years ago right? Like, right. like yeah. that, that's, I mean, that's the challenge. Yeah. Right now, you have one open meeting law determination where it, the ruling was was yeah. essentially provide, make sure that anything Mr. Gohartson requested was provided within 60 days of the order, that original request that he made, and fix, essentially fix insufficient minutes that were provided. That is what's been worked on, right? That timeline has, has, hasn't been met. Um, you're working in earnest to get that timeline done. With respect to the backlog of minutes, the AG's office is very aware that there's a substantial backlog. It's been communicated to them by me um, that, um, you know, there are deadlines that have been set by the school committee to get that backlog up to date, that you're working in earnest to get it done. Um, and, you know, whether there's an issue moving forward, you have to put in certainly a good faith effort to get that done. Um, and, you know, is there potential for additional fines? Yeah, until the backlog is fixed and until the, you know, you're caught up, right, to where you need to be legally, there's, there's that risk, right? Um, and so knowing it, it's, I mean, it would be impossible to get through that backlog, you know, in, in a week, right? If, if that was the case, that would have been done, right? So, so what I can say is at this point, the school committee is trying in earnest to move that project forward, show a good faith effort to get it done, and the sooner you get into compliance, the better. But, you know, but I, I wish I could just say, oh, this, but, right? yeah. but, but this, it doesn't work that way. Would they see us doing a three month proof like this thing as a good faith effort, or would it be immaterial? It, re it really depends. I mean, I, I've had conversations with the AG's office. This is not the first public body that's ever had a backlog issue, right, that's ever happened. And they, the Attorney General's office recognizes that, you know, sometimes it's hard to go back, especially if the composition of the body has changed, right, and get everything, you know, perfect, but you've got to put in a good faith effort, and they're really going to be concerned about the sufficiency of minutes. They're certainly going to be concerned about, um, you know, in, intentionally, right? If, if they find evidence that there was an intentional, um, you know, intentionally trying not to get it done, those kinds of things. That would certainly be a problem. But I, I think you do your best to get it done and you know, you you be transparent if there are hiccups. Um, your time plan frame um, is is definitely a robust time frame. Um, but it, it you know things do typically, not always, but typically they tend to slow down in the summer. So so the, the missing piece of that is, and we'll talk about the minutes in a little while, is how many minutes have been submitted to us that have had to go back and be done. And we have a number in our current um, possession for tonight that I think are going to require that. So that's review the school committee has to do, right. to say this isn't what happened in that meeting because that's a historical record of how we took votes and what we did. So there's a lot of tension around that. So, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying, and I think I would love to hear whether you're accepting this friendly amendment, because the reason for the friendly amendment isn't because I disagree, it's not because I am not concerned about our getting the minutes done, it's not because I think that, I. it's not because I have full confidence that this is going to all be peachy, in the next few weeks it's that I believe we haven't engaged in a process so 
to I hear you that the job description sets the expectations, but we have never. Okay, per, I I was unclear on the message of the superintendent. My understanding is that we haven't given this kind of feedback to Annie before that we are giving right now, and that process to me is important. When I think about teachers who have subpar performance, we would never let go of a teacher without evaluating them and giving them an opportunity and the support to, to improve. So the reason behind my friendly amendment is, there's some disagreements from Mace, the reason, <laughs> um, yeah, the reason for my friendly amendment is I believe we need a, a process. And so I would love for us to move forward and stop talking about, in this moment, what mm -hmm. we're going to do about the minutes. That's a conversation for another mm -hmm. agenda item. In this moment, our question is, are you going to accept this friendly amendment, or are we going to vote on the motion on the floor as it was initially? I, I would be happy to accept it, but I think the three-month window is going to bring us right back to this place again. And at the end of July, we need to have the minutes ready to turn in, and we have no oversight for making it happen other than Dr. Bonner having been in office for 30 days. So I, I do think we'll find ourselves back here having the same conversation again. Um, if there were a parameter that was a little tighter, we, I don't see how we can do that because we're not meeting in July. So um, I think we've gotten ourselves into a corner on this one. We, we've let the clock tick. So is that a yes or a no? I'm thinking about it. And I and I and I, I like it a lot. The time piece doesn't work for me, so that would be a no. So I propose that we vote on the motion on the floor then. Please don't get rid of the language of the friendly amendment. <laughs> it's in the minutes. Right. Right. <laughs> um, let's go to Member Stein and then we have her. I I tend to agree with um, Member Levy that we should have a process. It's just this is such a particularly bizarre situation because of the statutes and the way in which uh, we are the appointing authority and there's a, you know, we do not have all those remedies at our disposal. Um, and, you know, we were supposed to do this in December. Now it's June. So these concerns were raised in December in that letter. This is not like news. We've heard multiple accounts of these things being explained. So while the process hasn't been a HR perfect process, I totally agree and would like to see things done differently. I don't think we can say that there hasn't been a process. It just has been a sloppy process because of the strange nature of the oversight. And there has been, there's a letter from us in December that outlined this. Now we're here in June and I do worry, like a member Robbins, that we'll be back here again in August or in September or whenever um, and at some point, we, ha we cannot separate the issue of the minutes from this motion. They're part and parcel. So I think we have to think about what's in the best interest of the district um, in making the vote. And if we can't look at it as simply a procedural hiring and disciplinary issue because it's just too complex. And I want to say that I appreciate the opportunity to have this discussion, and I wish um, we'd be able to have it a little bit more open than earlier. It's cleared a lot of air. Member Holman, thank you. Um, could you clarify for me this specific motion, though? Is it it's a recommendation for the superintendent to? I I can read it. Thanks. Thanks. Um. Uh. To uh, recommend to the superintendent to dismiss Ms. Thompson from her duties as the school committee clerk. And then there was a... Okay. That's actually the part I want to talk to. And just before we move forward with this motion, I'd like you to consider the impact of asking someone to, like, from firing someone from half their responsibilities, half their job, but still being in central office, fulfilling the rest of their responsibilities and bringing someone else in to do the job that they were relieved from. I'm just, I'm thinking about the workplace and that is a very 
difficult dynamic in my mind to put everyone in the central office in, to put Annie in, to put the next person in. And there are, if you look at the alternatives, um, they, in my mind, create some opportunities that might be more beneficial for all parties involved, quite frankly, um, except for the part where then you don't have, you know, whatever aspects of having Annie in the office still, to some extent, grant. But I don't think those exceed the difficulty that this situation would create. Now, because this is a recommendation to the superintendent, she might consider that and make a decision. She stays for the whole thing, or you know, I'm asking Annie, or I'm firing Annie for all of, all of for the full one job description. And maybe down the line, this job needs to be split in two or something like that. But I just want to say that I'm concerned about the implications of creating this sort of half in, half out role where she's sort of tripped, sort of trapped. Like there's a difference between being fired and quitting. And um, and that shows up pretty starkly in this situation. I'd just also be concerned when, with what you're saying about training a new person and having them catch up on how to write minutes, how to write agendas, how to do, I mean, it's a lot of learning that would have to happen. It just seems like a managerial nightmare and it would not necessarily benefit us in terms of getting the job done, of catching up on the minutes and I worry that it just will impede the process, not accelerate it. Um, and can I, um, <clears throat> I really want to echo what Member Lee had said about the importance of the process and that even if, I mean, it was an, I think it was an, inter it's an interesting point about the job description having things laid out, but that's, I don't think that's really good enough. I mean, um, it really is so important to get to get feedback right there, and um, um, and in fact, while we are not the superintendent, we do supervise the superintendent, so we can say this really, really is something that has to happen. We this is important to the school committee and the function of the school. Um, it can't be a sloppy process. It needs to be organized, and um, it's important to all sides. That's what I think. Question. This is not a hybrid meeting. Right. So if one were to call the question, we might need to do a roll call vote. We could just do a yay or nay. We don't technically have to do a roll call yet, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll call the question unless I don't have to. <laughs> I don't. Does everyone keep piping in and are we done? Do you want to do a yay or nay vote on calling the question? Yeah. I call the question. All those in favor of calling the question say aye. 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 Question's called. Um, there wasn't actually a second. second. Also, <laughs> member Goldman. <clears throat> so, can we reiterate the motion that mm -hmm. we are now going to do a roll? Let's do a roll call on. Okay. Including the friendly amendment? No, the friendly yeah. amendment was rejected. Mm -hmm. I see. So, so the, it's the original motion. Right. The Which? original motion on the table is is to recommend to the superintendent to dismiss Ms. Thompson from her duties as the school commi committee clerk. But the uh, the superintendent is plural from the, the... Or it could be an S apostrophe. Yeah. 
Yes. And well, we don't have rates. multiple superintendents, so I wasn't mm -hmm. like you. You asked, "Can that happen?" But I didn't know how to answer. I don't. That. I don't either. I just, we, the question was, "Is it this superintendent or the next superintendent?" The superintendent said she is uncomfortable mm -hmm. discussing that at this point, and I want it to be on the table for the next superintendent as well. So if we're comfortable with the understanding that superintendent actually has a plural to it to include now and then and so on. Or just, just change it to yeah. current and incoming superintendent. To current and incoming. Sure. And or. And or. Current. And or. Okay. I think it's going to be and, right? Yeah. Because or, it's like. Right. Okay. Okay. And if not, then. <laughs> so, are you done with the motion? Everyone clear on it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, roll, Member Gazy, ready to roll call? Uh, yes, I vote no. Member Seraphie Cox. Uh, Member Seraphie Cox is continuing to type, and so okay. can you come back to me. Member Stein? Uh, yes. Member Levy? No. Member Miller? No. Uh, Member Goldman? No. <laughs> okay, I'm Member Davis? No. Uh, member uh, Mary Shara? No. No. Member Robbins? Yes. Member Serafi Cox? Original motion. Okay. Um, Two to seven. I'd like to make a motion. I'm just waiting for the we got it. to catch up. You copy and paste. Yeah, right? Yeah. No, mine. Oh, I see. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, my motion is to um, recommend to the incoming superintendent. that within the first three months of her time in the district, that she review with the school committee the job description of the clerk, clerk uh, set expectations for the role, and evaluate whether the role is adequately described and supported, as well as if Ms. Thompson has adequately performed the duties of the role. Uh, I second it. If a member Levy seconded by member Gazy. Any discussion? Member Davis. Could, well, two things. One is, could you read that again, please? Mm -hmm. And then, and then I, I think I have a question about it. If, if I heard it right. Uh, so it is. Um, a motion to recommend to the incoming superintendent that within the first three months of her time in the district, she review with the school committee the job description, set expectations for the role, and evaluate whether the role is adequately described slash supported, as well as if Ms. Thompson has adequately performed the role. I think we should clarify the role. So I'll put that in okay. there. Yeah. The role of the clerk. Yes. So, so... Thank you. So my my question has to do with um, I didn't hear it in there yet, or maybe you didn't intend to put in there something about like how it's determined. I guess it's by the job description, perhaps. 
but I was just I was thinking where's that feedback where's that checklist I'm like I'm all about the list yeah in my mind for everything that I do so like so so that to me is the setting expectations mm -hmm. for the role okay that's so that's actual communication with with Annie because that's what I'm picturing of that feedback that we're talking about so that she can hear in addition to what I, it's clear to me has been heard about about the minutes thing like that piece but but all the other things that we're hearing about that are of concern um, and um, okay I guess I would stop with that. well can I ask yeah. would it clear helped and clarify if it were to read set and communicate expectations mm -hmm. I think so. Perhaps the expectations could be passed by the mayor or something and or whatever you think is what it's like. Well, it says with the, the school. Is with the school. Right. Um, so my, oh sorry, is there? That's all, that's all I have. My question is, okay, so then the final thing <clears throat> is um, evaluate if Ms. Thompson has adequately performed the role, and then what? Mm. Um, then they get to decide. And take necessary and take action. Necessary action. Yeah. Um, so clarifying question. What's the time scale of the evaluation? Meaning, if there is whatever previous conversations and documented warning, are you saying we, they shouldn't take that into account? And it's only this three-month period. No. Or then it's within the first three months of her time in the district, she take that time to review with the school committee about the job description, set and communicate expectations for the role, and then evaluate whether the role is adequately described slash reported, as well as if Ms. Thompson has adequately performed the role. So it's a three month probation period so that the superintendent can set expectations mm -hmm. based on our input and evaluate. So it wouldn't be done in the order necessarily that it's listed there. Okay. She would use her judgment as to how to structure that three months. So it would make sense to set expectations early on and go over the job description and then evaluate whether that's been met. So we clarify the job description and then we set expectations based on that job description and evaluate whether or not Ms. Thompson has fulfilled those expectations. So uh, are we going to have like a special meeting in July with the incoming superintendent to let her know our particular expectations since she's not here this evening because we don't meet again until August. I thought we already passed a motion that the mayor would communicate the outcome of this conversation to the incoming superintendent. Did that not pass? No, it did. Right, but is that synonymous with our expectations? Because we're talking about five sort of things and like what is actually going to be com communicated. Yeah, that motion was actually for an annual. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and can I also ask, I think our next meeting in September is like the 16th, maybe? And August. So we're talking September, right? July, August, September. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't meet again until October, hopefully, um, which would be the middle of October. So it would be great to designate the actual school committee meeting that we're going to hold as an end date for that, rather than have it be a window of three months and that would be something that didn't slip under the wire we knew we were all going to need to be informed about so is that the september school committee yeah. that you were the middle meeting? september one is it the 16th no 14th 14th okay so that'd be an agenda yeah. Yeah. And my other question is, how does this help us accomplish the goal of getting these minutes done? Um, I understand we want them to be separate, but they're part and parcel. Um, and how many resources are we willing to dedicate in our own time and outside in funding to bring in people 
to make sure this happens. Yeah. yeah. I think to me that's a separate conversation from the one that the motion that's on the floor. I think um, but Annie is here because we are are discussing the issues that we are having with the performance, and I hear you that one of those issues is the is the issues of the minutes, and I think that's got to be a part of our next conversation when we talk about the minutes. So I, I, I would just stand by the motion that's on the floor. And it doesn't have to be the end of our conversation. We're still talking about minutes next. Right, right. But just the point is that you have finite resources and the person in the role to do them, we're talking about approving a probationary period. So it's endemic to the point about how we're going to accomplish the minutes. We can want to separate them, but they naturally <laughs> Can join. So I understand the love for a process and wanting to have this fair, whatever thing separate, but it's impossible materially to separate the two things. So we have to make a decision about this with that in mind. If we go this route, you are basically saying we are staying on the same track, plus probably this temp or whatever might be hired um, regarding the minutes. Yeah, I disagree with you. I don't think that we have to talk about both these things at the same time. I think we can talk about the process that we're putting in place to create a probationary period to then review mm -hmm. Annie's performance. And after we talk about whether we're gonna do this, we can talk about how are we gonna proceed with the minutes mm -hmm. because I don't actually know what is going on with the temp, what that costs, what the agreements are, and I think that's a different conversation. And I, if I were Annie listening to this conversation, I would understand that there's dissatisfaction with the way that the minutes have been repeatedly not done. And in three months, we're going to discuss whether she remains in this role. But I, I think on our agenda, we have a conversation about minutes next. It's just about approving specific minutes. It's not about the question of how we're going to get it done. It's different. OK. Well, I welcome you to make another motion after this motion either passes or doesn't pass about addressing the backlog of minutes. I. I appreciate that. Um, I think the prior motion that failed would have brought us a long way. You have a lot of people who disagreed with you. I know. So I call, can I call the question that we just so, well, uh, I, um, I just have a recommendation about how to word the, the motion because you use the word probationary period which to me feels much clearer than many of the other things that you had said before. So can I just say that to make a motion to recommend to the incoming superintendent that she put Ms. Thompson on a three-month probationary period, during which time she will, and then all the rest of it. Okay. And is there a deadline in that motion as we Oh, yes. The discussed. September. And report back. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Bonner starts on the 1st of July. Oh, by the July, August, September. Yeah, so uh, Member Robbins, you said uh, the October meeting? September 14th. September would take another month. No, because it's not a full month. You've got to have July, right. August, yeah. September. So yeah, you so have to go to October. Be the October. But that makes it a less than three month evaluation. So no, October. 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 That would be the 12th. That makes it, okay. October would be three months. Right. So let's keep in mind too that the superintendent um, has the right to take any actions she likes as well. Of yes. course. Any other I'm just trying to and further to report back to the school committee at the October I'm sorry, 12th, 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 2023 meeting about the outcome of the trip. Is that what you meant? Is that what you meant?
I'll say it again. Uh, recommend to the incoming superintendent that she put Ms. Thompson on a three-month probationary period, during which time she will review her job description. There's too many she's. Uh, during which time the superintendent <laughs> will review the job description set and communicate expectations for the role and evaluate whether the role is adequately described slash supported as well as if Ms. Thompson has adequately performed the role and take necessary action and further to report back to the school committee at the October 12th 2023 meeting about the outcome the superintendent. yes okay um so that motion was made and seconded Seconded by member Gacy. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? What date was it? October twelfth, twenty twenty three. When you're ready, roll call, please. Uh, member Seraphie Cutts. Yes. Member Stein. No. Member Levy? Yes. Member Miller? Yes. Member Goldman? Yes. Member Davis? She stepped away. Mayor Shara? Yes. Member Robbins? Yes. Gacy, yes. And that is all that is member uh, Miller. Oh, did I skip member Miller? Sorry. You did. You did. I saw I, yes. Okay. Oh, I oh. had. Member Davis is back, but she doesn't know. Oh, that's okay. Can you say it? Uh, the, the motion? Please. The motion is to recommend to the incoming superintendent that she put Ms. Thompson on a three-month probationary period during which time the superintendent will review the job description, set and communicate expectations for the role, and evaluate whether the role is adequately described slash supported, as well as if Ms. Thompson has adequately performed the role and take necessary action. And further, to report back to the school committee at the October 12, 2023 meeting about the outcome. Yes. Um, motion passes eight to one. Okay. Any further discussion on this agenda item? Who are you pointing to? Member Stein. Why? Because he wanted to talk about the minutes. Oh, that's that's another that's agenda. The, item. Oh, you just said that. Oh, addressing I, the backlog. Addressing the backlog. I didn't say that, but no, Member Stein said that the next agenda item is just to vote on the minutes and it's not to discuss the backlog and how we were going to address it. Oh, well, I mean, it's about the approval of the minutes and discussing them, so. But, so, but to the, the second item at the roll call, which was the performance complaints, is there any further discussion on this? Okay, so seeing none, I'd still like to know what Sorry. we're going to communicate to the incoming superintendent about our expectations. What are the expectations that we're communicating that we want him to evaluate Ms. Thompson on? We just passed that motion, but like, what are the actual expectations? When are, we, are we figuring those out right now? Would it be the clerk's portion of the job description? Well, a lot of what we've raised tonight have to do with um, comportment and behavior and expert understanding of role some very specific things that a supervisor coming in would not glean from a job description so many of the things listed in this letter would not be apparent to the superintendent um, and what they mean would not be apparent simply just by reading that letter so how do we express to the incoming superintendent what those items are I heard from many of you different things I heard from member Sarah B. Cox issues with meeting posting, issues that impacted bargaining in a significant way. I heard a specific set of issues from uh, member Robert. Like, 
How do we communicate that stuff, and how does it make it into the evaluation process? Uh, well, I think that the letter does actually fairly clearly outline the, the major components of the concerns, which is why we're having this conversation tonight. Um, in terms of the specific complaints, you know, specific issues, I mean, I heard um, uh, Superintendent Pearson Campbell say that she looked back and found emails from me from 2020 with complaints. I didn't even remember having sent emails. What I was thinking about was conversations that I had uh, with the former superintendent. So, um, you know, there is evidence that has been collected, and my assumption is that if it hasn't already been shared with Dr. Bonner, that it will be a part of this presentation to her that we that clearly you are gonna you know that conversation is gonna happen with this um, when, when all of this is communicated mm -hmm. yes I can share this I can share the, the letter and the concerns also I was going to say that <clears throat> I would assume that she would, I've been reading the notes that you, over your shoulder, which <laughs> are very clear and detailed in the various points that uh, we have all brought up, and that that would be part of a packet, including the research that Attorney Taylor has collected and put, you know, which detail all those um, documents, and I would imagine that Dr. Bonner would have a report and from I, her perspective. And I can speak to that too. Whenever it's been, it's part of my practice. Whenever there is a change in leadership in an organization or public, you know, in an organization that I represent, um, to provide um, the opportunity to have. Um, a legal update of things that are pending, right? And certainly, um, to the extent the school committee would want me, I, I can I can explain these issues certainly in a meeting with Dr. Uh, with Mayor Shiara as well. Um, it's it's yeah. part of what I my practice. Um, you know, typically I'll be updating on things like litigation, but in terms of this meeting tonight, I can certainly provide an update on. I mean, I guess for me, it's like Meg described the frustrating process of saying, I want this agenda posted, five email exchange, and that wasn't posted until it absolutely had to be. What's our expectation of when meetings are going to be posted? What's our expectation of when current meeting notes are going to be available? What's our expectation of when the backlog is going to be? Like, in order to measure that progress, I think we have to be pretty concrete about what we're expecting. And I don't know that we have that sussed out. So my understanding is we said that we would, now I have to go back to the motion, that in consultation with the school committee, mm -hmm. was that, a, that was not yep. a part of it, right? Yep, yep. it is. Mm -hmm. that, that, that that work would be done. And I know that we don't have a meeting, but perhaps either in the meetings that I have with her in the because of the superintendent evaluation mm -hmm. in July or part of the meeting that member Agna has with her in helping to onboard her that that could be a part of those conversations yeah I mean I just think we need an actual plan and a vehicle to get those to whoever um, yes I agree with you that's what I, I'm I, suggesting yeah I I guess I will, um, I, I'm, I'm feeling a little frustrated that I'm hearing from you that well, we don't have this, how is that gonna happen? But I, I haven't heard from you concrete suggestions of how to make it happen. Like, I feel yeah. like you're just constantly asking yeah, because others, the, yeah. how is this gonna happen? How is this gonna happen? And, and that's great, it's good to, to point out 
problems that are happening, but then it, it, it puts a lot of anxiety on people who um, are really trying to make it work to, to come up with a solution to this one question that you're asking. And, and when we come up with a solution, I, I, I don't hear you say, oh yeah, that's a really good idea. And here, I'm gonna add to your idea. Like, I don't hear that, that constructiveness in this conversation. And in past conversations, it like this iteration, this is an iter new iteration of, of, of a same pattern. And just as you know, we're talking about a pattern of frustration with Ms. Thompson, we also have this, a pattern of frustration with this kind of thing that, that does not enable us to move forward. And, and I'm sorry that I interrupted this uh, discussion with that, but it was a moment of clarity for me right now of like, I really, yes, please point out the challenges, but also please outline solutions. I, I, I'm going to just say it's a moment of clarity for me too and profound frustration because when this committee has not taken responsibility over and over again to solve this problem, not rescheduling the meeting from December, not taking up the suggestion that maybe just have the superintendent do it, all of these things I've suggested constructively and then you pass a motion, scant on details and then are blaming me for not giving you the solution to the ambiguity caused by that okay. motion. I'm, I'm, okay. It's a moment of clarity. Yeah. I'm so, uh, Dr. Bonner will, we will have these minutes. Dr. Bonner can also, Nam is here, can also review video of mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I think that, and she will have the other documents that we have. So, I think it's going to be pretty clear to her what our frustrations are and, and what our expectations are and what haven't been met and what we're looking for. Um, in the near and continuing future. Can, can I also say, I'm also assuming that if she has further questions before our group meeting, she's certainly welcome to reach out to any of us um, to have that conversation. Yes, and I, I anticipate she probably will be having individual meetings mm -hmm. with us as well. Um, you know, I, I think that's one of the things she's interested in. So that's certainly something in, if you're meeting with her uh, during the summer, in the, you know, the the weeks when she's just joining us, um, you can talk to her about it. Can I? Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure really how this particular piece fits but in the evaluation. <clears throat> one of the one of the five points that was mentioned or concerns you know at the opening of the meeting um, were some mentions of either demeanor or argumentative or some uh, demeanor is one of the one of the words that I was remembering but it's that kind of thing and that's that's the kind of thing that's really hard to measure you know evaluation wise so I didn't know where to put that, but I, that's something that I is trickier to, because that's subjective. Um, not to deny it at all, but it's just like it's trickier to measure. People have different tolerance for, like Dr. Bonner might not be moved by anything. You know what I mean? Like, so that's kind of harder to put in the three month part, but it's certainly something that has come up. Um, so. Um, just wanted to put that out there. I don't know really how to. In the, member Seraphy Cox, and in, even though I'm not able to come up with a solution for that one, but I didn't want to say anything until I could think of it. But I, it's harder to make it concrete. But it's it's a concern that maybe should at least be spoken of. I guess. You know. I mean, I can certainly talk to her about it. I, I trust Dr. Bonner yeah. will be able to uh, evaluate that. Yes, My thought is that um, member Sarah B. Cox's notes are very detailed. Mm -hmm. 
and I would imagine they're going to be distributed so that we'll all be able to read her exact notes. Mm -hmm. And if anything feels like it's been left out as a concern, I would think that that then could be communicated mm -hmm. even before the next meeting to either member Sarah B. Cox to add them in, that they weren't mentioned. And then again, also, if people have ideas that don't necessarily happen to happen right now about remedy, then they could be sent to the mayor, to the vice chair, to uh, Member Levy as the chair of the uh, superintendent evaluation committee, somehow, oh, those remedies that people think of could be passed along. Don't have to happen in a meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there any further discussion or can we move on to item three, and no, sorry, item four, open uh, approval of minutes, discussion, vote to approve school committee, open session meeting minutes for the following dates. Okay. Moving on to those minutes, we will start with 2020. Um, and is how would the committee like to proceed? Um, I, I think there are some questions and concerns about certain batches of minutes, so we don't want to take right. them as a group. So I uh, can we take out the 2020, uh, 2023 batch of minutes? Actually, 2023 and 2022. So they're not on a consent agenda, so they're... They're individual? Right. Okay. They, right. Yes, so we could move them in chunks as groups. We could take them individually. Um, so everybody got internet here? I can't mm -hmm. get See, it. I, I had to pop out and go back in myself before. How did you? That thing that popped up, you put your email in there and click the button and it connects. That's after it tells you it's not a secure connection. Well, okay, Wait. then it's up to you. I don't know. <laughs> so the signal public? And yes. Then, um, motion to approve 2020 20 minutes listed on the agenda. The minutes from the year 2020. Yes. So click. Motion has been made. Is I'll there second that and add friendly amendment to add 2021 to it. Accepted. Right. Okay. So the motion is to move to approve the minutes from 2020 and 2021. Okay. We, oh, we missed a. She missed a motion. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm trying to help Member Hazy. <laughs> so the motion made by Member Goldman is to approve uh, the minutes from 2020, so the, the, the dates listed for 2020 and 2021. And uh, it's seconded by Member Robbins. Um, Layla, did you? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify something. Yeah. And Bobby, I think... Um, Miss Jones, I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember to be formal in this thing. Um, I think you might actually be able to clarify this if I got it wrong. My understanding from your emails is if you look on the agenda, the list for 2020, everything that's listed out on the agenda, it was submitted on 2021. Um, there's the addition, I think it's the addition of 225-21 that was in your packets. And on the agenda, What's listed as 32721 was a typo and it should have been 32521. Okay, so okay, it's hold just. On. Uh, okay. Um, so you're in the year 2021. Correct. So what did you say about 225? So I believe 22521 is not on the list. It is. It is. Oh, it is. It's on okay. this agenda. But yeah. the 327 oh, is. is. And the 32721 is a. Is a typo. It should be three twenty-five twenty-one. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And in twenty-two, there's a two twenty-five, 
which should not be listed. Correct. That was the that twenty. Was, that was the yeah. twenty five oh, that okay. I missed. Sorry, yeah. the two twenty five spin off of twenty twenty two. But we're not in twenty twenty two yet. Right. So the motion right. is for twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one. All of those sets of minutes. Um, so discussion now on all of those sets. Yes. Um, I'm wondering if anyone who was on the committee during that term had the opportunity to review all of them and feels confident that they reflect the conversations and the votes that they remember to the best of their ability. Because I have no reference, except for some of the ones I watched. Um, I read through all of January 9th, 2020, um, and I made comments uh, to uh, in a document and sent them to Ms. Thompson, um, they were basically all corrections that were clerical errors rather than <coughs> corrections about the discussion. Mm -hmm. um, I have not had a chance to review the others. That was, you know, that was the one that I went through in detail because it was the first one. Um, was there anything <coughs> that I sent you that wasn't a Clerical no, that change. was a little bit confusing because that's when uh, the rules procedure were updated, like very detailed. Yes. And in the middle of the meeting, former Mayor Narkowitz said, can we stop doing each edit with a motion in a second for each edit, but let's do all the edits per section with a motion in a second. And so there was that moment where it changed, yes. you know. And so that you you caught that there wasn't a second on something. Yes. In a, you know. So and there actually wasn't a second, but I reworded it to explain that they had changed it. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so there was like the, a typo on stakeholders needed an S. And, that uh, so that was actually the the pieces uh, that I was seeing was like where there was mo a motion, but there was a second that was missing. Um, there was several of those. So. Right. Um, the motions were listed because they were per section, but it was really only one motion. So that's what's the problem there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've not read them all in detail, but I kind of stopped because what I was finding was I just didn't remember enough of the details to mm -hmm. know how accurate or not the minutes were. Okay, is there any further discussion on 2020 and 2021? Um, just to ask, the ones that you did review, because uh, it sounds like you skimmed over more of them and I went through one of them in great detail. Um, uh, the ones that you did review, did they look like the format that they should be with the, like, did you, you didn't see any uh, glaring errors? Yeah. No, but I also don't have a great understanding of what the AG is specifically looking for. Yeah. Um, I was just figuring you had already approved them in that way. Uh, well, I was not authorized to look at every one line by line. That would have been uh, really cost prohibitive, I think, yeah. for the mm -hmm. school committee. I looked at a handful um, of minutes at, at two different stages. Um, these are much improved. Like, yeah. in terms of the technical issues, I will say that they're, they are much improved. The, the two issues, and I don't know, because I know that there's been stuff since, you know, probably since the fifth that's been added, right? But there are two, there are two pieces um, that I had seen and I did, and again, it was a, a handful of them I looked at. It wasn't every single one. There were the issues with um, sometimes they'll, it'll say refer to it would have referred to a discussion, but it didn't actually summarize what the discussion with the, some, uh, the public body was. So that was been identified. If that's been fixed, then that's important. The other issues that have been fixed clearly in here are the inclusion of roll call, those kinds of things. So given the sh technical shape, and again, I can't comment on the substance of what the discussion that was captured was, because I'm gonna go back and then look at video and prior notes. But technically, 
I think that these are incredibly improved um, and that there's a good faith argument that they substantially comply. It's possible there are some minutes that you, that'll be reviewed and there might be a technical issue with how a motion was recorded. Um, you know, maybe just because of, of an accidental omission. Um, there may be some issues with, again, something being referred to as a discussion and it not being properly s summarized. At this point, um, I, I, I think there's really been a good faith effort, and so I can certainly defend them as sufficient if they were voting, if they were challenged with the AG's office. There might be certain instances, right? Um, I didn't go through every single one line by line. Okay. Any further discussion in 2020, 2021? Who seconded that motion? Yeah, I want to know that too. I think it was Meg. Meg. Sorry, Member Robbins, yeah. Okay. Roll call, please. 2020, 2020. Uh, Member Goldman? Yes. Member Davis? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Shara? Yes. Member Robbins? Yes. Member Gazy? Yes. Member Sarah Picard? Yes. Motion passes uh, <coughs> 8 to 1. Okay. Oh, yes, there we go. Um, motion to approve minutes of 2022 as listed on the agenda, excluding February 25th. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And. Oh, yes. wait. I thought we. No, she's talking about 2022. No. 2022. Now. Oh, there's another. Mo yeah. motion. motion to approve minutes for the year 2022, excluding. 225 school committee budget meeting and and then um, we have to exclude 69 69 818 818 98 98 and uh, one, two, and actually there was another one in 21 because so those are the ones that you said weren't approved by school committee prior. Oh, okay. okay. And okay. the same with, and I'm sorry, I, didn't I remember, right? Say that for 2021, the um, 327 and 429, okay. And then in 2022, the 69, I'm sorry, the 69 and the 818 okay. were four sets of minutes that were not previously approved by the school committee. Okay. So and this set of minutes, this deadline was to be the minutes that were previously approved by school committee. So we made a mistake on this last yes. motion. So um, I am retracting my motion for 2022. I know, but we can oh, for make a new motion for 2021. Sorry, sorry. Yep. Can I just understand what you're saying is that these weren't previously approved, and so they're not revisions. But that doesn't mean we can't approve them. But right? they're not in your packets. They're uh, not in the packet. They're not in the packet, correct. I, but I also want to say that the one for 325 doesn't exist. That meeting didn't happen. Right, correct. So, that's for, for, for the, so the ones that you have just approved, there's none of them that weren't approved by the school committee already. So you don't have to go back on that Can one. I ask where we are? Are we pulling stuff out of 2022? No, we're only talking about 20. Let's only talk about 2021. Okay, 2021. I just want to get, yeah. get us straight for 2021. The one that says 327 really should read 325. Yes. Yes. And, and that's that captured. 325 was not approved previously by school committee and is not included in the folder. So we actually, so. So you should have excluded I, am, I need to correct the motion. I need to. You can move to revoke the prior motion and. Okay, I'm making a motion to, adopt, yeah. to but there's another move thing. the prior approved. Well, we didn't get a second on that. Yeah, other that, motion that other motion doesn't, doesn't exist. So you're just revoking. We'll come to we'll <laughs> it. Yep. Okay, I'm revoking. I know. Okay, I know that the 22 motion we don't have to worry about. Right. It, that's 
but we're just putting it on hold. The 2020 plus 2021 motion was made, approved, and passed, yeah. but now I need to revoke it. Or Not you could revoke. move to amend. amend. Move to amend. Yeah. Excellent. I'd like to move to amend the last motion to be approve, oh, approval of minutes. To, to remove 325. Yeah. From 2021. And 429. And 429. And 429, 2021. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's what you have. 2021, 325, which says 327 in the agenda. Oh, you're right. That was a special school committee meeting. 421 and 429. 429, sorry. From 2021. Okay. 2021. Thank you. Amend. So the motion to amend, is there a second? I'll second. Okay. And then can I just ask, so why why were these not in here for first approval? I don't know. They've been they were drafted um, because they were part of they they were drafted. I don't know if they ever got approved by the school committee. Um, I do know they were drafted because there were copies that were sent to my office that went out with the original complaint. Okay, so or with the request for why the would we not include the drafts for approval? Mm -hmm. Because they weren't included in the packet, right? They weren't right. They weren't pre-approved. These are all pre-approved minutes that need to be updated, and so these those ones will be in the next round of backlog minutes for approval. Okay. It's just because they weren't in the packet, so we can't really. We can't really. Okay, so, so now we can vote on this. Can I ask? The the three twenty seven twenty one that are misdated, can yes. we pass that as long as we say it will be renamed? Three twenty five twenty one, yeah. So no, your motion not, is to... It's on the packet. It's on the packet. So you haven't reviewed yeah. it. Mm. Right. It's all right. You'll be reviewing it. We're amending. Motion. Was that in the... Pre it was in the previous motion, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's yeah, fine for us to... Okay. Just in the new... Um, in the amendment to retract... Is that the word I'm supposed to use? 325-21 and 429-21. So... Member Goldman made a motion to amend the last motion to remove 325 2021 and 429 2021 from approval because they were not included in the pack. Thank you. Yes. Okay. And that was seconded? Yeah, I did. I seconded. Okay. I have Member Davis, yes. Okay. okay. Any further discussion on that amendment? Roll, uh, all those in favor? Yeah, I can do this, right? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of that amendment, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Sentions? Okay. Member Goldman. Do we need to wait for her to say put the... It's a, it was a voice vote with no... Right. So no nays. No nos and no abstentions. Great. I'd like to make a motion. To approve. Uh, the 2022 minutes excluding 69 69 and 818 and 225 69 and 818 what about 225 and 9 225 was um, in the should have been in there there was no meeting on 225 there was no meeting on 225 oh, 22 22 yeah, okay right. so approve minutes 2022 excluding 225 because it is on it is on the agenda. Not a meeting. So excluding 225, not a meeting, plus 69 six, nine, and 818. 818. And so not the packet. And nine, no, nine, nine was approved, so that can be approved. Nine, eight is oh, okay. 818. 818. And 69. Okay. But not nine and eight. six nine. Oh right, we already yeah, got that. No, not nine eight. Okay. Nine eight is in the So two twenty five, no meeting. Correct. Six nine and eight eighteen, not in the packet. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. 
Was there a second? I'll second it. Second okay. by Member Davis. Okay. Any discussion on the minutes from 2022? Yeah. Okay. Start with Member Robinson. Good morning. I have trouble passing the 2022 minutes because we were here for that. Uh, I haven't had a chance to read through all of them, but in at least one that I looked at, there was a really gross error in it. Um, I think a few more than that. And I'm worried about the content of the others as a historical document. And I very much want to pass these minutes and I want them to go on and be part of our um, reservoir of what we can present to the AG's office. But um, the one that I will call attention to is, uh, I believe it's January 13th. 27, mm -hmm. 22. I think, it's a, I think it's 113. No? 127. 127. 127. Yeah. And um, I have not reviewed um, all of the video on this, but I did go back and uh, check some of the data on it. And um, I believe this is referred back before already, but um, on the calendar of meetings, let's say not on the calendar of meetings, the cap on the if you scroll down to um, What's the one before it's this? It's the 113. Yeah. 113. Yeah. Okay, I do need 113. Sorry, really sorry. Yeah. 22. Yes, 113, 22. Okay, 113. So 113, it starts with Judy Blanco. It's Judy Blanco speaking. Um, we did a consent agenda for minutes and other stuff. And then we um, voted on the uh, vice chair, letter C under new business and i would ask us to read that right. well we can just not approve this one it's more serious than one. that okay i'm sorry, sorry. the seriousness of it is you if you look at this we took a vote when we first met this is one of our first meetings to elect a vice chair mm -hmm. um, we did a roll call by on the vice chair and each one of us could have a look at how we're put down on what our vote was first of all as my memory is we voted um, yes for one candidate and or yes for another candidate. So there were no no's in that roll call. It was I would like to vote for member Levy or I would like to vote for member Agna. Um, so I'm very confused about why there are yeses and no's on this document um, that say that there were votes it doesn't actually say what the vote was for. It just says at the end, I don't see the motion for it really, at the end that um, member Agna would be the vice chair my vote is incorrectly recorded here, and I wonder if anyone else sees their vote incorrectly Mine recorded too. there. Oh, there's this as well. This um, is C underneath. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah. Aileen? I didn't catch it. Can okay, it Aileen, it has you down here as voting I voted, I voted um, Voting yeah. yes for Glenn. What? No, I voted for Dina. So, it has me voting uh, yeah, no for Glenn, but it this, this particular yeah. error, I think there might be other pieces in here that are not included in that conversation, which was a long one in that meeting. It was one of our first ones together. Um, there, are, there are missing pieces. I don't know how many of us have time to go back and look at the videos. It's quite painstaking. Um, but this is a tremendously inaccurate piece of documentation. And if it's representative of any of the other pieces that are in during our tenure as historical documents, I would really like to have time perhaps to split them up between us to be able to say that they are accurate and we do include the discussions. Um, and I and I feel really badly because I think this has been sent back before and it's come back to us again about this. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at the January 27th, 9, 13th, 13th, sorry. Yes, this was an, an item that was particularly called out I so could. I have no reassurance that there aren't other items in these minutes that are equally as incorrect, and I don't really understand how a roll call could be taken um, so poorly or so inaccurately. So Meg, what is your proposed friendly amendment? I don't have a friendly amendment to it right now. I'm putting a block on actually having any of them go through because I think we yes. have to have a discussion. I think that yeah, that would be the amendment, right? Instead of. 
Can I make a friendly amendment? Sure. Um, um, so I had particular issues with 527 and 414, some other sort of particular things. My friendly amendment would be that, um, do you uh, have a total number of wait, minutes? 527? Uh, 22. Ah, five, no, 514? Oh, 22. This is a, I see it, yeah, thank you. Yeah. In 414. Yeah. Um, I guess my friendly amendment would be that, can you tell me how many total we have for 22? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, oh. 17. Bobby? 17 minus three, so. Okay, so we have 17 that are on the table to be approved, but I, of course, would I would only approve 14 because three of them we have to pull out of the motion. Um, so should I make it for the 14 or for the 17? Well, motion to um, remove. Do you want to, why don't you make it for the 14? Okay, yeah. um, my friendly amendment would be to, um, Pull out the 14 and have each of us pick one or two, I'm willing to do two, to look at the votes, the summaries of discussion, etc., and see if there are any other errors that need to be corrected. So we wouldn't all have to look at all of them, but if we could figure out uh, like who wants to do two, who wants to do one, and then just look at the videos, look at the minutes, and confirm that what we're putting together is accurate. And then we would, if there were things that we saw, we would communicate directly with Annie. Mm -hmm. And then they would be in the minutes for July 31st with the rest of them. Sounds good. I'm I like actually going to add, add to that that it be Thank Annie you. and somebody else CC'd on that. Who's got another eyes on it. And I don't if it's Mark or Devon, I hear or you? I'm sorry, could you say it again? In, in addition to Annie, some other person who's aware of the Oh, right. just see, see the emails with okay. the, yeah. Probably maybe Margaret, she's the liaison. So I just want to clarify the dates. January 13th. No, we're actually pulling a whole bunch of them out. Okay, well, I only have a few noted. I just want to make sure I have all of them noted. So the four, there's the, the 14, right? Because we have to pull three. Yeah, so um, I am going to, um, I, I'm interested in pulling all of them. I like that part. The part where that's how we decide to manage them isn't a decision I want to make. So maybe we should just either pull that out and we can make a decision about that, or we can vote on your, I can not accept the friendly amendment, but we can all vote on yours to see if the distribution of work goes. Yeah, I'll pull it out and then we can do it the other way. Okay. Why is the distribution a problem? Like, is yeah, that fine? Let's, is let's that all good? Let's divvy it up. fine. Great. Never. Okay. You see what you're sure. in? Yeah. So okay. <laughs> I'll just, um, is it better for me to accept the friendly amendment or just to drop my motion and have Member Stein make it? Member Stein, can you say again what your friendly amendment is? Sure. Um, so the original motion, right, was to the thing is that we're not, go we're, like, we're not going to pass it. So it's not really a friendly amendment. It's just a complete change of the motion. Right, right. So then you can just so withdraw your motion. Let me just withdraw my motion, and then okay. you can make your motion. Okay. I think that's like... Just make sure I get the numbers right. Yeah. Okay, yep. Please. Go ahead. Uh, so my motion is to take the 14, 20, 22 minutes we have in the packet before us tonight, and... Um, have the current school committee divide up uh, the responsibilities of vetting them for correct votes and conversation summaries and any other formatting issues and send that information, any change requests directly to Annie and CC Margaret. If I heard that correctly. 
and um, and the mayor. Yep. Have that number shared? Yep. And the point I would say is, um, so the 14 minutes on the agenda for 2022, excluding, excluding, two ten or six. No, oh. two. 225. Oh, absolutely, 225. 69. 69. And 818. And 818. So we're doing all the others. Yes. Okay. School committee. I'll second that. So that's MSN. KG. Just because of my hearing, I just want to make sure I have all the dates completely. Yeah. If you so look on the agenda. If you look on our agenda, can you get the agenda for today? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh, do you want to add 23? Yeah, I was yeah, just thinking just that too. Um, I, I want to amend my motion to 2022 and 2023. Okay. And there's, then we'll pull there's out. There's none being pulled out. Great. Okay. 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 Yeah, so we'll three. Well, from there's 12, 12, 23 hasn't actually happened yet. All right. So I don't know how it got on there. Oh. It was that's a 112. From, that was right, 112, correct. Oh, yes, that was 112? Oh, that was a typo. Okay. That should be and a 112. And that was included. 112, 293. Correct. So, um, click on so 6, 9, and 8, 18 yeah. can, if they've been drafted, like, let's get those looked at. I agree. Well, 818 has been drafted. Oh, 22. 6 9 has not been drafted. That was during my medical leave last year. That's why it was. So somebody else took the notes. And... So which one is not available to draft? Oh, uh, 6 9. So and he's I, not available to draft. But I will write them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they'll be being written soon. So, yeah. So we actually don't need to exclude any of those from mm -hmm. approval. We can do all. Mm -hmm. Okay. 17 from 2022 and all three from 2023 and whoever has the six nine we'll just have to wait until annie finishes the draft to review it and then we can have it also be reviewed right right yeah i mean they're a part of the plan to uh draft all the backlog minutes right. after this so they're not really on this vote somebody read now where we are so we do need to exclude 6 9. Yeah, we need yeah. to exclude 6 9 okay. and 8 18 too. Okay. Those will be the next But batch. not 225. Uh, no, 225 were written, right? Oh, 225 it did, did not, not exist. It was not a meeting, it didn't exist. Oh, I see. Okay. How about the motion is just to divide all yeah. the 2022 right. and 2023 minutes now, yes, between school committee members yes. for us to look. Mm -hmm. Great, thank but, you. But yeah, but we're going to exclude that. Right, the six nine and the eight eighteen. No, I'm just right? saying all of the like all the ready ones. Uh, yeah. So uh, the divvying up, the the divvying up could be done by Miss Thompson, and she just like sends one or two to each Great. of us. Well, I suppose that could happen. I'm also concerned about the district attorney's or uh, the state attorney general's uh, deadline. So are we. Right, but I thought we had to do it tonight. You have already had to do the it two weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. Right, but the, the school committee's already missed the deadline. What I'm hearing is that the school committee wants to review these minutes because they're concerned about the sufficiency of the minutes for these two years that all these members were on that committee. That's, that's what I'm hearing. Um, and so... Um, you know, if you approved them tonight, but you still had concerns, you still have to go back, you know, you'd still be going back and doing the same exercise. So, like, you know, I, I, that's, I think, the factual space you're in right now. For 2022. And three. And, and, and 2022 and 2023. And three. Yeah. Which is, th is three right now. Three, three, minutes. Minutes. three minutes. For 2023. Yeah. So there's... 17 total, right? Because we don't have 225 because mm -hmm. it wasn't a meeting that took yeah. place. We don't have 6, 9, we don't have 8, 18. Correct. So that's 14, and then the 3 from 23 is 17. Yeah. Great. Um, so if Ms. Thompson is going to be uh, divvying them, mm -hmm. let's set a deadline for that. To be divvied and distributed. I'm so also, can you get that? I'm I'd also be happy to do it if it takes off workload. 
So I can I just yeah. I can give I mean, you them right now if you want. I mean, you have them all. We have them in the packet. Have, right. Oh, that you will send. We'll divvy them up. I could just send a list. Like just go, alpha, whatever you know. Just like yeah. here, do Sounds these. Good. And, if that's okay. Yep. And if people have a problem, we can then work it out. You'll take that lead. Yeah. Uh, sure. Um, signing. Yep. Great. No problem. Thank you. <clears throat> so, I just want to clarify. So, you want, so we would have to watch the video to make sure that right. the notes actually are correct. Or for recall from yeah, that recall. meeting. You might remember. In the meeting. Yeah, read stuff. I mean, I found I in some I of them that I looked at the <laughs> I mean, right. at, I, 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 take I was, I was, notes. yeah, I was reading back mm -hmm. on a set of notes from January 2020, mm -hmm. and I didn't have, I wasn't on Adderall then, and I still <laughs> remembered it. <laughs> um, and, and I mean, as I was reading and through, I was like, oh yeah, I remember that happening. I remember that happening. It's true that I didn't watch the video and think, oh, that's missing. But member Robbins read through a set of minutes and went, wait, that doesn't make sense. That's not how I voted. And mm -hmm. that, yeah, that's not how I voted. So that's what you're looking for, is Actually, things that don't make sense. That, because I did go through others, and there are, there are several discussions that are missing from the minutes. And there are several discussions that are not actually what we discussed in, in a way that are, is accurate. It leaves out, it's, it's not, if you, if you listen to the discussion again, there's a lot more to it than is included. Sure. Parents. Well, maybe yeah. what so you should do is volunteer for watch. those ones that you've already watched. I don't watched. know that they're not in the other ones. I'm happy to look at it. No, I was just saying that there were yeah, ones. I just want us to be aware of what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So we need to cover every discussion that we had during a meeting in a summary of, you know, what happened, who said it, what emotion was, is it recorded, all of that stuff. But we can't just say our perspective about how we saw the discussion. It has to be what we heard the discussion was. Well, that's actually a question that I have. What is the detail of the discussion that needs to be in the it, it doesn't need to be a transcript, right? But And you don't necessarily have to identify every single member that spoke on a, a topic. However, you do have to summarize what the general discussion was, right? So, you know, I don't, I, sometimes things are listed as, you know, the school committee discussed X, Y, and Z in a sort of a list. I think there are some challenges to doing that because it doesn't necessarily summarize the substance of what is said. But where it really becomes problematic is when there's a, dis there's a summary that says the school committee had a discussion. And questions were asked. Asked questions right. or made comments, right? That is not a summary. But then there's another piece that is a little bit different than a technical, like dealing with the technical aspects of a summary. And it's making sure that the summary accurately reflects the discussion that was had because what you're doing when you're when you're passing minutes is you're you're passing a memorialization of the record so if somebody asks for those minutes they have a, a, a good reflection of what the body was you know what was presented to the body how the body discussed things how they deliberated right and so Sometimes there are summaries of discussions, and I think this is what Member Robbins is, is speaking to, something that she identified. That there are sometimes, there have been moments where there are summaries of discussions, but on review, right, if you were to look at the video, for example, they really don't capture the spirit of the discussion, right? There may be some glaring issues. And I, I mean, I can provide an example that was, that was brought to my attention today. It wasn't something that I had reviewed, but I, I think it's a good example of what we're talking about. So I believe it was the 113 minutes that, that were being reviewed. There was a discussion the school committee, if I was to summarize it, there was a discussion about the annual calendar, right, of school committee minutes and subcommittee minutes, 
right? Mm -hmm. And it's captured in a very cursory way. When if you look at the video, there was actually a very significant discussion about, with questions like, why is the curriculum subcommittee, why is it only being recommended that the curriculum subcommittee meet four times a year, right? Why, and, and, and so really the substance of that conversation that the body had, essentially their deliberative process wasn't fairly memorialized. And, and I think that's something that as school committee members who have attended those meetings, only you can really look at and get a sense of. Um, you know, and you might want to refer to videos, but, but like Member Sari Feecock said, um, sometimes as you're reviewing minutes, you'll look at a summary and be like, oh, I remember that conversation. Wait, I think there might be, there might have been more to it. And those are the things that I think you probably would be, you'd be all in the best position to go back to. Okay. So you want them to summarize concerns that different members had about whatever the issue was. Right. If there right. are sticking right. points. Right. I mean, because so. you, you, I, I, I think, I imagine everybody in this room would agree, um, just by some objective evidence, that you folks are good at deliberation. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> I don't know if good is the right yeah, word. <laughs> you have robust, you have robust deliberation, and so it doesn't need to be a transcript. You don't have to memorialize what everybody said, but some make sure um, that when you're reviewing them, that you feel confident the summaries actually accurately reflect the spirit of what so was discussed. So that we discussed. don't pick and choose. And I will say, um, as a historian, that these are primary source documents. So someday somebody might want to come back and find out. You know, what did people talk about when they were doing the school districts? And it's it's entirely possible. I always like to look at it through that lens, you know, and they really want the accurate discussion about, um, you know, what were the things that concerned us and what were the opinions that were expressed or the evidence that was brought forward to substantiate decisions that we made. Or well, even the body, right? I mean, we're going to do this in budget and property yeah. on organic maintenance, right? right. right. And, and, I, and I will add, I, you've got a big task ahead of you in terms of the backlog and this kind of review. You know, once you're caught up, from month to month, it'll be more manageable, that kind of detail to, to take a look at. Okay, so the motion is on the floor. I seconded it. You seconded it. Um, do we need to reiterate it? Is everyone clear? We're good. I can just say what I have written. Member Stein made a motion to divide all available 2022 and 2023 minutes between school committee members to look and see if there are errors that need to be corrected. Member Stein will send each committee member one to two sets of minutes. Members will communicate about errors. And requested revisions. We'll, we'll communicate requested revisions. Um, directly with Ms. Thompson, Mayor Shiara, and Member Miller. Is that all? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do we need to say that then they will be on, they will be, the revisions will be ready mm. by July 31st? I would feel more comfortable. Yeah, I agree. That. I agree. <coughs> <coughs> to be approved at the August meeting? Yes. That's the July 30, so all minutes, all backlog is supposed to be done by July 31st mm -hmm. so that we have time to review. What is the document. date of the July meeting? There's no July meeting. So the deadline is July 31st. Yeah. For, um, yeah, yeah. but sorry, what was, you want to know the August meeting? When, so they'll be approved at the, at the August meeting. Right. But, right. but they will be in a folder that we all can access mm -hmm. by July 31st so that we then have two weeks or whatever oh, okay. to, uh, we're, we're trying to, to solve the problem of <coughs> getting them the night before and not having time to review them. So our, it's actually, when's our meeting in August? Is it the, oh, it's the 10th, so it'll give us roughly 10 days to review them. Okay. Um, so then when uh, should, 
members send requested revisions mm -hmm. to Ms. Thompson by. Indeed, but. <laughs> uh, what's today? Uh, today is the 14th. Like July 1st, Saturday, July 3rd, Monday, June 30th, June 30th, it's a Friday. Why do we order these numbers you're talking about now? A um, letter, a sooner date? When, um, so when, 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 we we <laughs> when, when we will get June 30th. Yes. June 30th. Okay. It's June 30th. June 30th sounds June 30th. good. Then there's a month. Okay. All those in favor of this plan, please say aye. 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 Any no's? Any extensions? Okay. Okay. Uh, yes? before we move on to the next item. Is there something we need to discuss about the additional backlog and how it's being addressed? Number seven. I mean, it's not on the agenda. Um, but it has to do with minutes, which we're in the process of discussing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not <laughs> sure if Margaret or, um, sorry, uh, Member Miller or, um, Ms. Jones can tell us where we're at, um, if they're prepared to do that, but it might be useful to hear um, where, where things are and what, how many minutes and what expectations there are in the coming months. We just set some for sort of catching us up, but there's other minutes and backlog minutes and subcommittee minutes, and I don't know where any of that's at. Executive session minutes. I'm happy to talk about that. That would be great. So um, Annie has um, provided a list by each section, so executive session, um, student council, um, Negotiation. negotiations, et cetera. Special meeting. And she has them all listed out by date. And then she and Michelle will work on it. Now, just as a reminder, Michelle is doing it as she can when she can within her other duties. Um, we have also have gotten two people that can help temporary. One will be um, slightly less than another because one will be to a temp agency and one was a former student um, that Michelle knew to help expedite that these get done. Annie and Michelle have identified where those minutes are that the two people can work on. I've had them sign, or will have them sign, confidentiality waivers. Um, and we're going to use them as little as possible. Um, I'll have weekly check-ins with Annie. Um, and, and we've talked about that, and I'll include well, Margaret will be checking in too. too yeah. with us. I have a schedule so. of meetings of when I'm going to be going in, which is, you know, I can't, because I work full time, obviously, I'm going when we have a schedule. Um, and I was, I have the same plan that Bobby just mentioned that categorizes the meetings and what has to be done and who is doing what thing. And could you just tell us, like, so how many executive session meetings are we looking at? How many, like, can you tell us the total and then the breakdown, the number of meetings? I can in a later email, okay. um, probably tomorrow, not tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> is there, like, a, do you have a ballpark idea? I don't. I really, I mean, I, I can see the list in my mind. Okay. There's a lot. There's a lot. And what do you expect expenditure will be? It's hard to tell because, again, I know that Annie's going to put forth her best effort along with Michelle. And so it's my idea to keep it 
as minimal as possible. Um, I would expect it to be under 10,000 between the two. I'm ballparking. So, but it's something that um, we feel that really needs to be done and, and we have to have that plan to get it done. And where will that funding come from? That I will still have to identify. It will probably come from salary lines that weren't spent in totality. Um, there's also some IT lines that, um, or technology lines that have not been spent in completion. So there is some room. Um, it's not ideal, but again, it is a solution um, so just to get this done so that we can all move forward, however that may be. So that's like 10000 that will go back to our Correct. student choice account for the deficit. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and do you know, you can probably tell us in the email too, but like what's the timeline projected for completion of all of them? All of them, so the deadline is going to be that they're all going to be in a folder for school committee by July 31st, so mm -hmm. pretty Monday. Um, and it's going to be, I anticipate that Annie, after looking over whatever she has to look over from the two people and then Michelle's, will actually start posting them to the folder as soon as she completes them so that you're not getting 45 sets of email all at once. You're going to get them as, as we they're go. completed. Can we get notifications of that when they go in? Yeah, they'll be in your email. Okay. Um, since we are using an outside source as well, will we then no longer be using overtime? I would hope that could be the case. Mm -hmm. um, can we have the first get them in, which is going to, so I'm meeting with, um, or Annie and Michelle and myself are meeting with one of them tomorrow and the other on Friday. Um, both seem to have good experience and relative experience so that they'll be able to pick it up rather quickly. Um, so after that, if, if they're, and I believe they're both ready to start for next week. So if I could have a week and then I can write to all of the school committee um, to kind of get a feel of how they're doing for that week. And that will give me, along with the number of minutes that need to be completed, a better idea to send to you. Because, um, I mean, I, I heard you say that we will use them the least amount as possible, but if actually they will be less expensive to use than doing time and a half, uh -huh. then it would make sense to use them instead of doing overtime. Okay. Yeah. That's what we'll, we'll have to see how many hours they want to put in. And so that would be the beginning of that calculation. Because I don't think either one of them want to do a full-time thing. Right? Am I right about that? Um, I don't know that they, I think the agency person would... Would want to full-time? Well... Temporary full time. Certainly. Well, no, of course it's temporary. And it, okay, and it may be that there's some weeks that she can't do. She's got it. She's a stay-at-home mom. She's going to be doing it. Um, we're going to do it on Zoom so we can share the documents so I can help her go through it, which would be a lot easier than these former ones, which were done by other people, which was hard to do, hard to do. So it's a little bit different if you have an internal temp higher than if you hire a, a, an agency. Right, so you have to remember procurement laws. So there, I think, as long as this is under the 10,000 threshold, right. you're probably okay. Otherwise, you would have to put it out for an RFP. So you have to be careful about that. And I know that, so just so the school yeah. committee is aware of that, that's a piece that um, Bobby, uh, Ms. Jones knows about. <laughs> we talk um, about. Also, just to note that Annie is the only one, it's my understanding, Annie's the only one who can do the executive and the negotiating minutes because they're not recorded and they are her notes. Um, so that is what she's been told to, to start on. Mm -hmm. Not look at any of the other ones, let the others start and move on those mm -hmm. and she'll work specifically on I'm going to have to really look at all of them, frankly, because when I, I think about that vice chair vote, we sort of did these revisions on, a, um, Michelle and I did them on a sort of factory thing. She's the one that wrote in roll call vote, and then she added the grid. So she, it was, it was recorded correctly on my grid that I gave her, but I think she might have been moving too fast and just did it that way. 
So it's my bad because I should have caught that, right? I should have, but I will have to review every set of minutes that they do in order to catch things like that. And it takes time. Well, we will also be reviewing that. Right. That too. And, and that would be great. we don't charge. And right. we also don't get over. Right. <laughs> and Michelle, I think, is well aware of that now, so she'll be doing that correctly. Right. It takes time. time. Right, of course. So not you're folder. not looking at the ones that get included in the folder? Because yeah, I looked at them all. That one I missed. I'm sorry. It's there, really funny. There's more than one in. It's really, there are, okay. there are several in there. So we, we need to know that you're actually going, when they get in there, they've had your approval and they're. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not, I have to look at them all. So I truly do have to look at them all. And the other thing I want to say is, Member Secretary Cox, if you don't mind, I'm going to send you my sample negotiating minutes. Those were long meetings, uh, and they involved um, shared working on documents. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make sure I've got it exactly how you think it should be. And I think it should be brief because they're executive session minutes. But if you don't mind, I'll send you a couple of drafts and you can tell me if you think that's the right format for you. And I would appreciate fewer of the other minutes. Yeah. Well, I was going to say that, um, noted. But, um, so maybe we'll give you one instead of two. Um, but I'm realizing that we're probably going to have to review subcommittee meeting minutes. Um, review executive session minutes. No, there's no subcommittee. All subcommittee meeting minutes are caught up. So we've approved all. Yeah, well, except for the last ones. Yeah, yeah, all subcommittee, except for the last few ones, are caught up and approved. I think there's okay. some that were sent back. So, uh, sorry, I, 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 I'm, I'm, no, I'm just thinking are all caught negotiations. Up they're pretty easy to write and write very quickly. Yeah, they're all caught up. So there's no subcommittee minutes on okay. this. And look, I guess the question was like, do we want to do a quality check on minutes for past school committees that we're going to get. Do we want to look at a subset as a group, like we're doing for 2022 and 2023, or not? Um, when there's video. Say it one more time. Sorry. You sorry, it's late. Um, so when we, when we start to get the <laughs> backlog minutes, yeah. do we want to validate the elements that Attorney Taylor mentioned on some of those at least to, to verify the if they're accurate memorials to what happened when there's video or not. Um, so tonight we passed 2020 and 2021 without doing that. But do we want to keep doing that or do we want to look at them, maybe a sample and say, we've looked through these, looks like a pretty good representation of the conversation, etc. Votes are recorded correctly or we look through and we find errors and we say, we're not sure about it. Like, how, what level of review do we want to do for backlog minutes coming to us in the end of July? I mean, I think if we find errors, we have to know them. And then we have to, you know, alert. It, so hopefully in that two-week period or 10-day period, um, we would make them known and so presumably by that point july 31st all minutes are done so then in that 10-day period anything that we're seeing we can send we can individually send and say this is what i see these are the revisions i'm requesting um can i speak please okay i just want to make sure that when we're looking at the backlog the minutes and what needs to be drafted, everybody's on the same page. And so I clearly there's executive session minutes, everybody knows that. They go back to 2018, 2019. Mm. And I'm hearing that the negotiate that subcommittee meetings are caught up, but does that include all the negotiations. No, no, no. Okay. That's what I was. Okay. That's right. what I was negotiating, like, oh, okay. negotiating <laughs> it is, is a, a largely executive session, so they're you know, but they're, I've split them up between negotiating and regular. Okay, session. and and in terms of the subcommittees, my understanding, and maybe it's been corrected, is that there are still minutes for the ad hoc for the ad hoc COVID nineteen. Yeah. 19 yep. And okay. the uh, superintendent search of this year. Okay. Okay. Are you all set? 
I, I yeah, I mean, the, I wouldn't know if there's others, but I just wanted to make sure everybody was on the same page. It's an opportunity to do that. Yes, definitely. We'll make a motion to suspend the rules. Thank you. Motion's been made. Was there a second? Second. You made and seconded. Discussion. Uh, all those in favor of suspending rules, please say aye. 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 Any no's? No. No. Two no's, any other no's? Any abstentions? Okay. Oh, I didn't say aye. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but are you saying no? No, I'm saying aye. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get it? Okay, so two no's, rest our eyes. Yes. Um, my next question, then my question is, um, we are going to look at these ones, and then the ones that aren't included in the 22-23 are backlog older ones, right. which will be worked on, and then as they are completed, will be put into a folder that will be distributed to all of us. Yes, we'll access. Um, which should be reviewed, it sounds like, by us. But are yeah. we all going to review all of them? Are we all going to review the first three and then no one's going to review the next 80? Or like, do we have an idea? That's what I'm looking for. Let's each take a month. And any time a group of minutes comes in that's that month, that's your job. So Dina is January and Emily is February. And we go around in that way. I, take July. I would like July. Who's <laughs> <laughs> getting two months? Yeah, somebody has to get two months. That's okay. Yeah. Two folks. So, well, two people do, yeah. Somebody gets July and. Well, I guess. I mean, I'm just, I don't know the total number, but I just don't know how we're going to do that in 10 days. I mean, I know they're going to get added, <laughs> but the end date, the draft date is July 30, 31st. And our, we meet on August 10th with the intent of passing the ball. So I don't know how many meetings they're going to be in, in a month across a number of years and various subcommittees and executive sessions and bargaining. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's probably not going to actually happen. Are you, are you surprised by this? Like, We're sorry, I'm not, I'm not meaning to be so snarky. So, it's but a lot of them, we, there is no video and yeah. none of us were there. So, so, right. so is, are it, we is it possible? Folks? Sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead. Well, we had talked about bringing in folks from other school committee, older school committees, to review the, especially the executive session minutes from their realm in the olden times. Um, can I can I speak? My first meeting that I did was in September of 2018, and there were 26 executive session minutes for approval, going back from before that school committee meeting. And I remember Mayor Narkowitz uh, saying, yes, you can approve the old ones from the old school committee. Oh, yeah. We, we can. absolutely can. We have yeah. authority. Yeah. Like, the, the issue is that there yeah, were, I, 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 I recognize that there are some members from the former school committees who feel very strongly that they want to ensure that those are accurate reflections. And, 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 and Attorney Taylor has said that they can be invited in. So, yes, they can sorry, be invited in. My, question and wasn't really can we do that yeah. it's how do we want to arrange for that yeah. um i'm sorry uh <laughs> do you have a i have an idea idea and then question then okay so the one question is once we approve them and oh, they're oh, first start with that's sorry yeah, idea. an idea to the question at hand what was your idea to the question at hand sorry she she's asking what is your idea about how to invite members previous school committee I'm, members I'm just, who were actually in the meetings okay thanks um, so I had a question first about it which is if we if we approve um, all of the minutes as they came to us for executive session or would it, that we weren't here for so that we meet the deadline for the AG's office is there any window for going back and changing them once they've been approved after we've had more time? There's not. Once they're approved, for that's it. You can find errors, and they don't. You can't go back and say, "Whoops, we made a mistake." Then they have okay. to come back to us and we have to approve them again. I'm not yeah. saying. I'm not saying that that would be something 
we are basically satisfying them that we did the minutes, but we give ourselves more of a window to um, slowly go back and, re and review or invite those folks in to have a look at them so we do have that historical record that's accurate because the alternative would be that we can't because there's no time. I mean, we can, yeah, we can we can revise minutes after we, can always we, revise we revise. just yeah. did that. So that would be my yeah. suggestion, which would be we go ahead and we get what we get and we approve them and we set up a plan to invite those folks in and it has to be here, does it, Layla? We can't just have them look at it because they're not on the school well, committee. Well, they're not on the school committee. I mean, there are different approaches. You could have them sign. If they really want to review them, they could sign a confidentiality right. agreement. You could have them come into the office and look at it. You could share it and then revoke it with view access only. I mean, there are different way mechanisms. I don't think you need to decide that tonight. But there, there are different ways you could do it. You want to make sure um, that people understand because they're executive session. And if they've been on the school committee, they know this, right? But to have them reaffirm that, that there's been, that they will still, if they're invited into that process, they've got to keep it confidential. But yeah. Well, so my thought process just went like this. If that's a possibility, why don't we just do that right now, approve all of the minutes, mm -hmm. send them off to the AG, and then we go back and we fix them. And then I realized, because we have to, in good faith, right. say that we are doing our best to approve the minutes as they reflect the record, or as they should be reflecting what actually happened. And so I, I, I actually think we should not do that, even though it feels like the But we only have control over the meetings that we were at in terms of what that is. And we don't have any control over stuff we weren't witness to. You guys do. So you might remember stuff from the executive committee, but the rest of us don't. Um, so we're just trying to think forward think about how we give ourselves a little bit of a luxury of time, but still stay true to the accuracy of what we put out there in the long run. Well, that's a good point. I mean, what does it, what does it look like for you to look at minutes from a particular special meeting from 2019. You know, like I don't, How far back probably you? won't take you very, are you going to look at the video at the same time or it won't take you very long? We, we can't in executive session. Right, so the executive mm -hmm. session ones. You're going to look for glaring errors really, or things that don't make sense. Yeah, like those, we, we're not, we don't have the knowledge we or access to the resources we need to, you know, fine tooth comb through those. Right. right. So the, the question was, can yeah. we invite the folks who were there right. to have a look? Right. right. You it, there, you can have for meetings you weren't there for. Notes were taken, so you do have that. Mm -hmm. I also thought for some of the negotiation subcommittees. Um, Maybe my recollection is off, but I thought some of the actual negotiations that took place with NACE were recorded. Yeah. Yes. It's the caucusing that wasn't. Right. So, right. Half those so some of those very long meetings, you will have some of that yep. video that you can go back mm -hmm. and capture. Um, I think the challenge is going to be older minutes um, that were in person. Um, that none of you were on the board for the so I you just said before that we don't have to make a decision on how to invite them except I'm not sure how or when else we would make that decision. well I mean, if, if, if you were to do it if you were to approve them right I think what member Robbins originally said is to work on them approve right. them and then invite people in the process if you want to start that now then you probably should make some decisions I mean, I think if we're going to ask them to review them for the August meeting, we need to figure out how we're going to do that, or what, whether we want to open the invitation that they come to that August meeting, or if we want to provide a different opportunity. I mean, and, and the other thing is, um, I'm just thinking of negotiation subcommittee. There were two members of the negotiation subcommittee um, for some of the back minutes um, that Emily must have involved in <coughs> as the chair. So if I'm thinking, I forgot what year it was. Downey. Yeah. 2009. Molly. <coughs> Molly. Yeah. Molly. Yeah. Remember signing it, Jason? I was going to make a motion to try to help. 
give us a path. I'm not sure about this motion, but it is as well as um, four meetings of which there is no recording, and few or no members of the current body or participants. It will separate those meetings from the ones we're going to pass in August. It provide the opportunity for members of those bodies to review so we can approve by our September meeting. Because I just, I don't want to set an expectation with a bunch of ex-members that they're going to have 10 days and then we don't even have the meeting minutes. I, I just, it seems like a bad idea. So that's my proposal. Can you say it one more time? Sure. We're going to separate the completed meeting minutes that we receive on July 31st. Um, and separate out those that have few or no members of the current body. No, uh, no, is what you said before. No. Is there well, one member, like if, I want to put like few in case, because like to uh, Member Levy's point, there are probably members that serve with you that would want to be part of the whatever, you know. So I don't want to exclude okay. them, but I want to give them a. <coughs> I see, I see what you're saying. Um, and we will. And for those that there's like no recording, that's the other thing. Because if there's a recording, we could do something about it. Mm -hmm. um, so just that subset, um, move that approval to our September meeting and invite past members of those bodies to review them um, prior to the September meeting. Because <coughs> they have to review them in August so they could get back yeah, to yeah. Annie. Yeah, you're right. Review them by... August 31st. Yeah, or like that. I mean, I'm just very worried about the volume. Yeah. So, yeah. is there a second? I'll second it and then clarify it. Um, so, what I wrote down, it's not exactly what you said, is for meetings for which there is no recording and few or no current member was present, uh, drafted minutes will be made available to former members for review mm, after due diligence, like after, you know, for, uh, um, to former members for confidential review. Yeah. Confidential um, review and feedback. Former members who wish to prefer. or interested uh -huh. former members. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> to interested former members for confidential review and have those minutes approved at the September meeting. Okay. And uh, Kai, um, friendly member Kai made a good point about trying to put an end date on when they could send us the review um, in line with the September meeting so that Annie has enough time to make whatever mm -hmm. changes they request. Um, so before we, for the uh, August meeting, we said uh, that they needed to be finalized by July 31st and revisions sent to Annie by June 30th. So, mm -hmm. no, not June. Oh, revisions for those yeah. ones. Mm -hmm. right, right, yeah. um, revisions from us to right, you right, by right, June 30th. Right. So revisions would need to be sent to Annie by... August 20th. So, did I miss, so are, we're saying that those minutes, we have no hope that they will be approved at the August meeting. That's what we're copying. Yeah. Okay. Can, can I offer just a thought? Mm -hmm. And you guys can do it what you want. You don't know how many former members of the school committee will right. want to be involved in any of this review, right? You might just have one or two people that want to, right? Mm -hmm. Is it worthwhile to send out an email to those former members of the school committee and say, we are working on a backlog. If there are any minutes of an executive session that you were in attendance for, would you like to have the opportunity to review them before approval, right? You might end up getting, if people don't respond, or if they say no, you know you're not gonna have to send anything back for them, mm -hmm. you'll know that now. If they do say yes, you'll know that's somebody who wants to participate, and you can identify mm -hmm. those as the minutes come in. 
That's a good idea. Okay, so Great. who's going to send Annie? Is Annie going to send that email? I'll send that email. I just want to make sure that I give them the dates that they're going to get that those minutes from and when they need to have them reviewed mm -hmm. by so they can make their decision. Yeah, that's what the okay. current motion is about. Yep, yep, just as long as we have those. Mm -hmm. So presumably they'll get it by July 31 because they're part of that group, right? So then I'm trying to find out when our September meeting is. They'll get it by uh, when is July 14th. 14th. Yeah, July 31st, yeah. And then, and then revisions back to Annie by August 14th, is that what you said? I said August 20th, but yeah. So our school committee meeting in September is the 14th. So, so it's two weeks in August. Should we get to give her more? And then there's four weeks in July. I have to write them all. July. So if we did like the 20th, like you're saying, uh, Kyle, that would give three weeks for review and three weeks for revision. Redrafting. Mm -hmm. yeah, like four weeks for revision, yeah. Yeah. Good. Just, yeah, just under four weeks. Yeah, that would work. So between August 1st and August 20th. Yeah. By August 20th, you said. <coughs> I think it's the best way to slice it, yeah. Since the motion talks about uh, minutes that have, for which there's no video, is will that will that be obvious because they're the executive session minutes? Or are there some yeah. sets of minutes that there's just not a video for? No. no. Only just the current just, ones. Only the what? Current ones. <coughs> um, OK, so it's really the executive session ones. Mm -hmm. Or, yeah. So then should I replace no recording with executive session? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't, was all the meetings recorded in 2018? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have those. All right. We have yeah. mom here right now, recording yeah. all meetings oh, right, right, all the right. time. But like sometimes, you know, there are yeah. times that the video didn't, you know, I was on city oh. council in 2018 and sometimes Maybe, yeah. things yeah. didn't work. And now it's not recording subcommittee meetings. Okay. No, but subcommittees are all It's 1120. I just want to note that we have multiple agenda items in the executive session. I am not able to be here past midnight. Okay. So if we can move, that would be awesome. Cool. Okay, so there's a motion. It was seconded, yes? Mm hmm Is everyone comfortable voting on it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you want to read it again so you remember what we just created? For all executive sessions. Sorry, uh, motion for all executive session meeting minutes. Sorry. Where there were few or no current member present, drafted minutes will be made available by July 31st, 2023 to interested former members for confidential review and have those minutes approved at the September meeting. Feedback will need to be sent back to Ms. Thompson by August 20th, 2023. And could you just include um, Member Miller and the mayor again? Okay, everybody clear? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any no's? Any abstention? Okay. We are up to five uh, board docs, discussion and possible vote regarding board docs contract and whether to cancel or continue its implementation. And Bobby. We're going to talk about this. So I know it was discussed a lot already, but um, just to look back once the first year that they had it for FY22, it was 18000 When I came here, I was reviewing lines. I asked what that one was for. I was told I did approach Annie, and I asked um, what it involved, and she told me. And we inquired about what the difference was between the pro and the regular. So at that point, I started working with um, Board Doc to 
reduce it because it wasn't being used effectively and what the pro was was just to include all the subcommittees. Um, so that's that. Um, the other things I know is just what Annie has already said is the agendas um, don't seem to be compatible. Um, it's cumbersome to use, which Michelle did um, voice her opinion on that and did agree with that. Um, Annie said the first year the policy was done, but it did take them nearly a year. Um, company's not responsive. On my side of it is for the um, money side, and I would wished I had your experience, and I have not. It took me, and I could provide you with the emails and the dates that I um, wrote back sometimes. I just call them. Yeah. Um, so anyways, there was that, and then they finally did after, I can't tell you how many months, they did finally send me a revised um, quote for this year for the um, $9,000 rather than the $18,000, um, which I have not signed yet. For the standard, right? The Correct, yes. Um, so it, it, it just sounded to me like it's not useful. Um, I have not worked with it. I can't attest to it, uh, just what I have gained from conversations. When does our current um, subscription end? I believe it would be June of this year. Let's see. It was approved in January or December. December. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's November um, of 22. Right yeah, we're, yeah, November of 22 to November of 23. So should you decide to um, vote to discontinue the use, I would try to work with the company to prorate um, and if, as you had said, uh, Member Robbins, that if they showed little to no use, so perhaps even if we did do that, maybe I could just not pay it at all. But that's conversations I have. Bobby, did you talk to MASC? Did and I did call not. You? That, I, I have a note here because, yeah. yeah, I did not know that MASC. She said she would call you, so um, yeah. I did, she was going to deal with it. Yeah. No, I haven't no. talked to that. But I can, I can reach out there, too. Just to see what Because they, they were billing MASC directly. That's probably why you were having trouble getting to them, I okay. think. Um, because all of the all of the member districts who use board docs get it through MASC. Yeah, and I don't know how we bought it outside of them. It, it didn't do us any favors, but they would have handled all that mm -hmm. for us. Yeah. yeah, I'll definitely contact them just to see um, what they can provide me for information. Um, I'd like to make a motion um, that I'm going to put out some timing, but I'm open to suggestions on the timing. Um, that um, my motion is that we, as a school committee, try to utilize the software that we subscribe to um, and see if it is something that we think would be beneficial. Um, since our current subscription runs through November, of 23. Um, I propose we do this in September. Um, I would be willing to set up um, the uh, an onboarding call for all of us with uh, the vendor and try to take care of some of those questions as well. Um, I'd ask member Robbins to help me if she's willing. But I think we should try to use the thing on paper and actually evaluate it ourselves as a committee and see if it's going to be useful. And to do that work in September, because I don't think we can do it this summer um, with vacations and everything else. With minutes. <laughs> yeah, minute, yeah, exactly. Is there any way to set up accounts so that we can like tinker, sort yeah. of look? We all have accounts, so, so we have we, them. Let me amend this yeah. to say that I would also make um, hold on, let me get the right language. Uh, 
Bear with me one second. Um, as part of this motion, I would like to be made, let's see, a super administrator. It's not a super, you gotta get it right. It's like a super publisher or something. Right. You gotta get it right. Um, <clears throat> an email, yeah, a super publisher. Because there are many different rights that can be assigned, including publisher, executive, administrator, moderator, there's a million things. So if you approve me to be one of the super publishers, I will go through the minutia of what that actually means and tell you what the permissions are and set you up with appropriate accounts and then we can change permissions however. And who can anoint you that? You guys. No, we have to call a company and add it, but they, they told us clearly that there could only be two. I mean... And so, am, and what am I? I'm not looking at it right now. I'm not, one, I'm not that. But you're, the next level, I mean, it, it, Michelle and I would be the ones, we are the ones that have the documents that we'd be adding, adding in, so we have to be the super administrator. I mean, the CEO, it says the CEO of the organization could make changes in name, so it would either be superintendent or the mayor. Could write to board docs and say, please make X change. Because um, that's what they say, like, we, we need the CEO of the organization to contact us to request a change. Okay. So there can only be two. There currently are two. We Super can drop publishers. Michelle and have we can add him. But um, I will say this: the sales department there is very responsive, and the, I thought the whole company would be really responsive. And in fact, when Bobby couldn't get in touch with them, I called the sales guy. And guess what? He got right back to me, but he doesn't have the answers I needed. So I so, mean, I had an incredible yeah. conversation yesterday. I called support. And they were having some sort of an outage, and some other software piece there answered. And they were like, let me get your name and number, let me get your contact info. When that team is done responding to high volume, let me in touch with you. And they wrote me back at 8 o'clock last night. And then wrote me back again, and gave me a bunch of helpful links, screenshots with things circled, responding. My experience has been totally different. Um, and they're willing to have is unlimited tech support, and set up support from them based on their membership. So so I didn't write it down. What's the name of the designation you need? Super Publisher. It's very weird. And I got a lot of stuff from um, Debbie Cabral at Southeastern Tech who sent, who sent videos and links and uh, Pia Roper. I don't know if you guys have run into her, who's um, the board doc support person. And Debbie said she'd help us with it too. So these are people who will be practicing using the software for 10 years and have had a good success with it. So if I send them an email on my letterhead, they will do it. So you already have it. So if I just give them your name, will they know, will they be able to find your account? They should be able to. Okay. They will be able to. They I have actually am the one that has to call because email. I am the super publisher. So I have to call to ask him to be added and I'm happy to do that. Okay. So when is that going to happen? Call him tomorrow. So I'm sending you the fast track for executive viewers. Okay. Great. Um, sorry, member. So I will Just second this motion. Okay. Member Davis. Okay. <clears throat> um, this probably falls in the category of it's 11:30 and may or may not make sense, but. Is there, just being a, what's the word, devil's advocate, is there also the thought of maybe don't use board docs anymore at all? Yes, that know. is. Can, is, there, is that a school of thought that we should entertain? Well, instead of, is, like, is this a good use of time? I think that's what I'm I think we don't know unless we know, yeah. right? Yeah. We have yeah. no way to judge. Okay. Yeah. Because time place. right now is like a thing for for us for for this. And this and this as just listening to it feels like we're using time. Not that'll be time in this meeting. I mean time to figure it out, to go, to get on there. Could be a really good use of time because then in the long run it could be like look at us go, yeah. but time is of the essence in this particular thing, this situation, and money. 
So it just occurred to me. So I think that's why the timeline was established for September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Knowing that we would make a decision before it would need to be renewed. In okay. September. I just wanted to mm -hmm. throw that out. We have there. already spent tens of thousands of dollars right. on this. Yeah. So, so I that it wouldn't feel as worthwhile yeah. to really investigate it ourselves before yeah. we say okay. no. And yeah. can I can I just add Super. the other thing that I thought of, the investigation of it, this might be water over the dam or whatever the saying is, is previous school committee already researched it and decided on it, but no, maybe no. not adequately. There's no. no research, it was a presentation. And and the by staff. Okay. Because I was like, is it reinventing the wheel of like let's look at their notes and it was already thought about. No. Okay. And it sounds like the agenda like it I'm having faith that you are going to have a rigorous oh you know, investigation I have of board docs and check the like Is it agenda work? Yeah. feature. Does the yeah. that seems to be the yeah. Um, I think the other thing is that you should consider is once Mike looks through all of this, what makes more sense, spending money on the software or using the Google Suite that we're using more often? Bobby, what's the date that the contract expires? November 23rd or 30th. Right? Okay, so, so we're let's gonna make sure that it's on the November, November 9th yeah. school committee meeting agenda. Yeah. May I ask a question? Because I just think it might be important. Um, it sounds like it is the current contract that you're in the middle of that you've been just recently obtained. Correct. So um, I get the motion is to, but but um, <coughs> it would need to still be signed. I'm going to call right. MASC. Okay. See okay. if they can okay. maybe work a little more effectively that way. Okay. They're very annoyed with board talks. For mm -hmm. not going this, through that. This company says the guy, the guy who, I, who bought it? Annie, did you do that? So who, who purchased the software? <clears throat> I know that Nick uh, went through, had to jump through a lot of hoops and we had to chase down board docs for more information. There was a lot of docu signs. I remember that. Um, you know, for some reason they weren't signing. It was frustrating. The so next, they, but. they did feel like maybe the guy who came and presented did a back end run on mm -hmm. that. So, you know, that particular person, I'm sure they would like to know, would be held accountable. Drew Wareham. Excuse me? Drew Wareham. He's still with the company. Well, that would be the conversation to have with him. Okay. Was he trying to get the commission? Well, oh, sure. he got a commission. Yeah. I mean, he was. So, right, exactly. The motion's on the floor. Is to the motion? Yeah, I was going to say if we could vote to make, I, I want to call the question. Yeah. Okay. If there's no further discussion, let's not bother for a vote and calling the question. Can we read it? Sure. Uh, so the motion is to table this item to the November meeting and ask members of the school committee to try and utilize the software and evaluate the usefulness of it. And further to appoint Member Stein to be a super publisher access level on the software. I thought it was September meeting. Well, that's what Member Stein said at first, but then well, that we would vote whether or not to continue with Board Docs in the November meeting. And in September, I'm going to try to set up uh, either with probably with the help of Board Docs a meeting that I would invite you guys to. Okay. To try it out together. But the November meeting doesn't need to be a part of the motion. Also send them I'm just trying to make sure that we know it's got to be on the agenda for November okay. because yeah. if we don't make a decision by November 9th at that meeting, then the contract will be in a new contract. Okay, so the final decision will be on the November yeah. 9th, 2023 agenda. agenda. Okay. Great. Can I just add one more thing to it? But Bobby, when you speak to board docs again, I, I think it's worth saying to them, we had a process with this, we didn't use it. Wouldn't you like to give us, either give us back half of what the usage fees were for the year when we didn't use it, or extend us an extra year for it. Um, they seem to be open, you know, and just say, look, you know, my school committee's meeting and we're gonna dump it unless we get a little bit more support around this. Yeah. Okay. okay, no further discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any no's? Any abstentions? Okay. 
We are on to a go to approve illustrative math MOA. I don't think you guys need me here anymore, so. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so this is not match MOA. It's math. Yes. Um, that was changed. Uh, if you refresh, <laughs> I'm uh, on that one document. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the uh, uh, this is an MOA that was previously ratified by this body in executive session, and this is just a um, open session ratification, um, as is our practice. Um, so I would make a motion to approve the illustrative math MOA. Second. Uh-oh. Mike, Any discussion? All those in favor of approval, please say aye. 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 Any no's? Any abstentions? Okay. Who was the second? Member I got credit. <laughs> <laughs> and we were just notified that Roxanne got a $165,000 continuation grant for this program for us. Well, that's yeah. awesome. For the illustrative. Yeah. Great. It's great. Okay. Um, on to 567. Discussion and possible vote to authorize the member Sarah P. Cox and member Agna to write a letter to the media on behalf of the school committee endorsing the Thrive Act. Mm -hmm. So, um, last meeting, we uh, approved the resolution, and I. Uh, was talking uh, with some advocates about what further actions we could take and uh, one of the ideas was to be very public with our not everybody watches our meetings you know what? so um, uh, I just would like uh, to be a bit more public with our position and so I uh, would like for y'all to authorize me and uh, member Agna to uh, to write a letter to the editor um, on behalf of the school committee, we would use the language, you know, from the resolution and so forth. So moved. Is there a second? second. Motion is made. Can we, can we all sign it, or does it have to be on behalf of the school committee? Um, my guess is that the, that the paper <coughs> will just put the Northampton School Committee at the bottom. I can don't you, think they can, would list can all Can you submit members, it with their names and let them make that decision? Sure. I think that would be great. Yeah. It's, there's just so much more power in, in that group piece. Yes. So, so is it just going to be the resolution, or will you guys add add to it? We'll use the language from the resolution to make it into a letter instead mm -hmm. of just the resolution. Yeah. It's not just copy and pasting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Any no's? Any abstentions? Okay. Um, so we are now going to enter into executive session. Is somebody. Yes? Why are you looking at me like that? Because mm. I'm looking at you. Okay. No reason. I, I'm happy to make the motion. Okay. Um, uh, motion to. Uh, I'm making a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to Massachusetts General Law Open Meeting Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the governmental body and the chair so declares. Specifically, the school committee will discuss strategy with respect to a proposed memoranda of agreement with NACE, other possible mid-contract bargaining issues, and litigating strategy with respect to Doe versus City of Northampton. Motion is made. Is there a second? I second. Seconded by Member Beasy, Chair So Declares. We will be adjourning from executive session. Um, and roll call, please, on entering executive session. Uh, Member Levy. Yes, but I'm not going to be able to stay. Yes. Uh, Member Miller. 
Member Miller? Yes. Sorry. Uh, Member Goldman? Yes. Member Davis? Yes. Member Mayor Shara? Yes. Member Robbins? Yep. Member Gazy? Yes. Member Sarafi Cox? Yes. Member Stein? Yes. 